Welcome to the Zelda Informer podcast. I am your host, as always, Alfred Tabex, joined today by one person and one person only, and that is Nathaniel Rumpeljance. Yeah, I'm excited for this week. Although it's not and, this podcast, why I'm excited. But And, if you guys noticed, we had a cool new intro at the very beginning of the video, done by the fabulous and fantastic Mr. McIntyre from McIntyre Productions. And He's a bunch of his friends. And too. a bunch of his friends. He's been on the show a bunch of times, been a great guest, um, he's a really cool guy, check out some of his videos, um, he's great at what he does, so go ahead and uh, just enjoy what he has to do, but <laughs> after the podcast, because we've got some cool stuff ready for you. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is, of course, we're going to begin and end with this, okay? So we're going to talk about the Game Awards, and we just recently learned, like as of like maybe an hour and a half ago... The Game Awards are going to feature an exclusive look at Breath of the Wild. Um, Now, there's really not a lot to go off of here, um, but as we reported, and as has been reported multiple times before, is that Jeff Keighley has said that he wants the trailers in games, or trailers in games, the trailers for the games, or the the, um, gameplay footage or whatever, to be more than just little snippets of the video, like more than just 5 to 30 seconds, kind of like what we got with uh, no Man's Sky, which it was just like screen swipes of things that might be in the game, and then we all know what happened there. Um, sorry, always taking shots at that game. They did release an update. It does make the game better. Bases. It's just yeah. Fixes and, everything. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, hey, there's there's some improvements that are like Be- small better ones. than nothing. Yeah, it's 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 not the game we were promised just yet, but it's it's getting there. Um, aside from that, uh, what we're hoping for, or what I'm hoping for. Um, is a few things, and we'll just talk about what we're hoping for for this. It's just more of a discussion topic than like, oh, exciting news! Look at all the things that we're gonna see. Um, is what I really want to, what we really want to see. Um, I imagine first off is switch footage, um, because we've seen six, seven hours of Wii U footage of the game. Now it's time for us to see switch footage, uh, like native switch footage. Um, and one of the things that we might get, considering that this is going to be an exclusive. Uh, preview of the game is I'm hoping that they're going to give us a release date for the game. Now this may happen, this may not happen based on like, you know, Nintendo being Nintendo. They might say look forward for more information in January to find out when we're going to release the game. Um, but I'm hoping that they'll at least give us like a, you know, fall or winter 2017 or like, you know, Q1 2017 or something like that to where we know kind of in a definitive range where it's coming out. Um, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that doesn't really want to see too much of the game. Like, I want to see how it looks on the Switch, but I don't really want to see, like, dungeons or anything like that because I don't want that spoiled for me. Um, but w- what about you, Nate? I'm, I'm just kind of talking to talk here. <laughs> Total opposite of you. I know. I know you are. Um, according to Nintendo, we've seen, like, less than 1% of the game. So what's it going to kill the show off 2 or 3% more? Um... And if in that 2 or 3%, it just shows off, you know, like, a couple minutes of, like, an area outside of the starting area. Um, preferably an area we haven't really seen a lot of yet. Maybe we've seen, like, a glimpse of it in the reveal trailer, but we haven't really, like, seen any gameplay there. Um, and then, you know, I'd really like to see... Uh, I'd like to see this trailer do something that we haven't seen so far with the game. Because all we've seen with the game is basically, here's a big open world, you can do anything you want in it, have a good day. You and if like that's all they show trailer? again, it's like, okay, is that all this game is? And we know, as Zelda fans, that that's not it. There's story, there's towns, there's NPCs, there's things going on. But we haven't seen any of it. We just keep hearing them say, oh, it exists, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping for, like, a cinematic trailer. Like, that was one of the things I mentioned a while back. Like, if this is a really story-focused Zelda game, then maybe they're going to show us, like actual cut scenes and and like what we talked about last time where uh was it last time or the time it was the time before i think no it was with bethany was on um where we talked about how they wanted to be up to par with the hyrule warrior cut scenes so i'm hoping that we're gonna see those kind of like visuals and, and movies in breath of the wild um and hopefully we're gonna see a cinematic trailer at some <laughs> point putting that together maybe showing us like some some of the cool updated graphics in terms of how the movies work but um again this, that might just be a pipe dream that might just be me um all i want to see is them show thing I, I guess the biggest thing here because uh 
Jeff Keighley specifically mentioned, like, they're going to have, like, four or five minutes of Mass Effect Andromeda footage. Um, and he said that's kind of the direction, you know, they wanted to go. As you said earlier, they don't want to repeat No Man's Sky, where it's mm-hmm. too much of a vertical slice, so little of it, that it overpromises and then, you know, under-delivers. I think Jeff Keighley kind of took it personal uh, with what happened with No Man's Sky because he was part of the hype train for that game. Um, and he doesn't want that to repeat. He wants the games to get hyped upon their own merit based on uh, a realistic vision of what that game is. And, you know, No Man's Sky obviously overpromised. We've, <laughs> we've underhandedly bashed that game so many times Be- in the beat past. Beat it into the ground. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I-, I think with this, that tells me we're getting at least three, four, maybe even five minutes of Breath of the Wild here. Whether or not it's just a trailer, <laughs> whether or not it's like, uh, you know, like an E3 thing where like there's a trailer followed up by like a live on stage demo or something. I have no idea, but I just want whatever they show. Number one, I think we both agree it definitively needs to be Switch footage, and they need to yes. literally state this is Breath of the Wild on the Switch, um, or somewhere. Whether it's a, maybe it's just a logo on the footage, I have no idea. But like, they, it needs to be pretty clear that this is Switch, uh, and I wouldn't even mind. I don't think they would do something like this until the January event. And I wouldn't even mind if at some point in this display of Breath of the Wild, they show like one of those silly video slices that show the differences between the Switch and the Wii U version. Mm-hmm. Um, just from a visual presentation standpoint. I mean, they, they don't have to spend a lot of time on it. You know, just Even if it's just like a five, six, seven second clip. Like If the Switch version definitively looks way better than the Wii U version... That's something they might want to highlight right here when they have the, all the hardcore audience paying attention. Mm-hmm. Being like, Don't they, this game isn't held back that? because of the Switch is basically what I, what I hope that message is. Did they do that with Twilight Princess HD and do a side-by-side video? They did, but again, that's a remake. This is a port, yeah, yeah. and they didn't I mean, do that. Was, I didn't know if that was them or if that was another uh, like channel. or. I don't know. It, there was a lot of them. So uh, all I know is, is uh, you know, this is Nintendo... Nintendo in front of the most hardcore video game audience there is. Um, an audience that cares about video game awards is <laughs> a pretty serious gaming audience. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that that's why, you know, back in 2014, they showed off, you know, at the time, Zelda U uh, there in the first place was that's where an audience might be for that game. So now that it's coming back, like, you know, now, two years later, they need to, you know, really show that not only is... Breath of the Wild, the game you should still believe in. Like, don't you know, lose the hype you got from E3. Here's why you should also believe in it on the Switch, and why no one in their right mind should believe the Switch is holding this game back, which is what a lot of people fear, especially if this game <clears throat> isn't coming out at launch and is coming out, you know, in June. They're worried. Well, once you get so far away from launch, you start looking for games that take advantage of the Switch, and if this game's held back because of the Wii U version, visually. Uh, so I'm hoping, that's why I kind of hope they do like one of those little vertical slices, even just for a little bit, to show how much better it looks on Switch, uh, mm-hmm. which might be discouraging to Wii U owners, but to be fair, I don't think Nintendo should care about that. Um, well, trying to a lot of people watching the these awards anyways. don't own a Wii U, so that that shouldn't even be a thought process that they need to worry about. But beyond that, I think everything they show needs to be new. I don't want to see any retread. As you said, we got seven hours of Wii U footage of, like, one area. Mm-hmm. And that's not even counting all the various demo, you know, gameplay footage out there. So I really want to see something new. Uh, they talked about NPCs and villages. Show us one. The only way I say don't show us one is if there only is one. <laughs> I hope not. Please but, no. But, like, with a game this size, you got to figure there's multiple villages and, you know, hundreds of, of NPCs at least that you can interact with. Um, so I would hope they could show us a village, even if they don't want to show us any story, like say they don't want to physically talk to an NPC that gives away story, you know, elements or whatever, you know, cause that's not what they wanted to do at E3. They could at least show, Hey, look, like M- NPCs exist, villages exist. There are things to do here. Uh, there are things to, you know, to find out in the world because a lot of what we've seen in the exploration so far is you find a shrine or you find like an, an overall boss and that's pretty much it. You might find, you know, like, cool things like the fire rod and all that stuff, but that's stuff you kind of expect in Zelda. Yeah. I, I, I want to see some <clears throat> unexpected things and uh, ways to show that this game is a modern game, not a last-gen game like people are afraid it's going to feel like. Uh, so, and, and that's kind of my theme here is, like, you know, 
define that this is Switch footage, show that the Switch you know version looks visually superior to the Wii U. Even plays uh, better. Even I plays guess. better, whether it's FPS or what. I mean, I don't think they're going to do that because they're not going to crap all over the Wii U version, but I can <laughs> see them just at least showing visually that it's better on the Switch. And then just showing that there's a lot to this game beyond just, hey, you can go anywhere and do anything. What's the mm-hmm. point of going anywhere and doing anything if there's nothing to find? So they need to show village you know a village i would like to see even like just entering a dungeon we have not we, we've heard them say there are dungeons we have never in the history of zelda gone into a zelda game release without seeing footage or screenshots of a dungeon yeah and, and i'd like to know how many dungeons specifically because uh, it's again we've talked about the rumor that there's only gonna be four dungeons mm-hmm. which is you know majora's mask did that well, it's okay was, if they're uh, huge. I mean, they have to yeah. be absolutely enor- that, ginormous. That, that's fine. And like I said, Majora's Mask did that, and it worked fine for that game. And, you know, say what you will, that was ranked uh, Zelda Informer's top <laughs> Zelda game. So, yep, two of the last three years now. S- sorry that anybody hates that game or disagrees. That You know, I voted for <laughs> it. You can shoot me if you want. But that was the, like, that, that should give you hope if they only say, well, there's only four dungeons. That game was still long. There was so much to do in that game. And the dungeons were only a part of it. Mm-hmm. And so this game, as much as we look forward to dungeons, as much as we look forward to shrines and stuff, this game is like, yeah, all that stuff's nice, but we also want to include you know, the, t- the, the towns and the, sh- the sh- uh, shrines, like I said earlier. The open air, mm-hmm. quote unquote. Um, that, that whole aspect of the game is just as important as the dungeons, if not more important. I would love, and this is maybe just because it's a dream that was never fulfilled with Skyward Sword. I would love if they end all the footage showing Link hopping on a sky, like a like a, a loft wing, on the ground, flying up into the sky, into the clouds, and just dropping himself anywhere he wants in the world. <laughs> like the freedom of flight that people wanted in Skyward Sword, like they can do that now. The the, the console restrictions aren't there, um, so I still think that was. I, I don't think it's. Gonna, I don't think flight's even going to be in the game. But if it is. That would like just be such a sick way to be like, yeah, we've been showing you all this exploration and how you can climb and how you can do this. And, oh, by the way, eventually you can fly in a loft wing. <laughs> how, how how bad is it? And then like even if even if they don't show him dropping off the loft wing anywhere he wants, you know, you can kind of infer that's possible because the sailcloth is in the game mm-hmm. or parasail as they're calling it. Uh, but even if they show like you go up on that loft up in the sky and you just in the distance see this giant beast just flying and you're like what and then it just ends and then it just tells you like a month and a day or if it just ends in 2017 or whatever because um, obviously we, we want to if it's going to come out in March we want to know it's coming out in March yeah um, if it's not coming out in March I would almost like them to hint at least give a little hint like get the bad news out of the way now like summer 2017. Um, you know, if they say summer 2017 or if they say, you know, launch window, tw- you know, 2017 or wherever, where now you know launch window means not launch day. Yeah. Um, well, we you know, also just... want to make, as Nintendo, they, they should probably make sure at this point, since there are conflicting reviews, that it's going to come out in summer and then it's going to come out in March. They need to go ahead and settle this and say, okay, this is what, this is when it's going to come out. Like, March 2017 or June 2017 or summer 2017. Yeah, and the thing is, if it's coming out in March, like, and Nintendo knows it's coming out in March, they should not shy away from that right now. If they yeah. have a huge killer, like, showing for this game, it looks awesome, and somehow they end in that epic finale that I want them to, getting in the loft wing of the sky and seeing this huge beast that you think you can fight, whether or not you can, I don't know, Nintendo's going to leave that as a mystery. <laughs> um but so you go up the screen, you see this big beast, and all of a sudden it flashes on the screen. If it says March 2017, people are gonna flip, like it's gonna go nuts because everyone is worried this is not making launch. So if yeah. it is gonna make launch, and Nintendo knows it, this is the crowd to tell that to. Hey, look, come check out the Switch on January 12th. But uh, by the way, this game's gonna be there day one. So no matter what happens, like you need to show up and buy the Switch because you're gonna want to play this. We've kind of we kind of already transitioned into the release date, which is another yes. topic that I had. Again, we're bringing up the release date for uh, Breath of the Wild because yes. Game UK is uh, apparently advertising <laughs> Breath of the Wild as a March 2017 release. Yes. So, um, you know, there's that. <laughs> yeah, and GameStop has plans to advertise the game in Q1, um, even though. So, like, so we're getting conflicting reports. And yeah, it, it, it's weird. <clears throat> it's really weird. Now, to be fair. Um, from what I read 
uh, from other like game UK like people who actually shop there. Uh, it, it's really hard to believe Game UK with any sort of release date for anything. <laughs> Apparently, they lie with their in-store advertising all the time to push pre-orders. Um, and the fact that Game UK has an advertisement out for Breath of the Wild when literally no other retailer in the world does. Um, like, there's not even a poster at GameStop for this game. So you wouldn't yeah. even know it's coming unless you asked an employee about it. Uh, so it's really weird that they even have advertising out for it, let alone that it has a date on it. Like, it's highly doubtful that's the actual press material Nintendo gave them. Um, it's also it, highly doubtful it, it Nintendo's really, going to do anything about it. <laughs> the, their their quote unquote uh, press release or whatever game UK has put out looks like something made in MS Shop. Oh yeah, uh, paint. Um, because like if you look at it, it's like oh, there's a white box around like with the rating pending thing and mm-hmm. the the temp box art. So it, yeah, it, it, it doesn't look, look Nintendo quality to be honest. Yeah, um, uh, but they do list it on their website as March 2017 <clears throat> as well. Uh, that's kind of the big, oh, Game UK is a guarantee and it's going to be there. Yeah, just be careful with those retailer dates. Uh, a lot of retailers have it listed for December 31st, 2017. Some have it listed for June now. I think mm-hmm. it was, uh, was it Target? Can't remember. There was some retailer out there that, that for a little bit listed the game as June 13th. Um, I can't remember which retailer it was. It, it might it's not Target. listed like... It might yeah. have been uh, Walmart, one of those two. I don't yeah, which one. yeah. Well, it, it was only for a very short time, and, and someone got a screen cap of it. But they, it's, you know, they, they've taken that down now. But uh, if Nintendo knows it's going to be a launch game, this is the time to be really confident yeah. about it and really hammer home that like I don't. It doesn't matter what you've been hearing. Like this is coming March. Period. Of course, at that point, they literally cannot backtrack. Um, they cannot come out in January and be like, "Yeah, we said March, but not really." And here's the here's the thing about this too. Um, this is one of the things. Like again, we mentioned these guys before. Um, I doubt they even listen to us or hear hear us talk. But uh, we talk about kind of funny a lot. Um, and I was listening to one of their game casts, um, one of the most more recent ones, and they talked about uh, how while one of the rumors has also said that Mario, whatever the, the Mario 3D game is going to be a release game. Um, so I'm going to kind of pose this question to you, Nate. Do you think that it'd be wise? to release their Mario, uh, their, whatever their new Mario game is, like the, the 3D world, not Mario 3D world, but the Mario in a 3D space, like a huge Mario game alongside their Zelda game as a launch title, or do you think it'd be best to stagger those out? Uh, part of me wants to say it's, it's better to stagger them, but again, this all depends what the actual first-year lineup is for the system. Mm-hmm. If they've got like 12 massive games hitting... Uh, next year, which would be you know less, that'd be over one game a month. Yeah. Uh, then they absolutely should launch with Mario and Zelda, especially if they know you know a, a month later you know that's when they have Pikmin coming, or a month after that they have Pokemon Stars, and a month after that they have you know the the new Smash Bros or whatever, like whatever they have lined up. Like if they have such a killer first year lineup, to me, you almost should because. I know there's the argument over, oh, you really should only have one killer game at launch. Why? <laughs> Not everyone cares about Breath of the Wild. And Mario is a much bigger franchise yeah. than Zelda in terms of popularity. Uh, so you could argue it almost makes sense to delay Zelda for so Mario can have the spotlight. But they're both going to have like equal spotlight. When you go to pick up a Switch, there's going to be a giant Mario and giant Breath of the Wild banner. Like you're, If you like Nintendo games, you're going to grab both day one. It's just going to happen. Um, I don't think Nintendo needs to concern itself, especially if they know the Switch is coming in at a killer price. Like, if they know, hey, 250 people buy a couple games with it, like, that's that's a good price. That's Mm -hmm. a good deal. Um, You know, for basically what you could buy the Nintendo Wii U Deluxe version on its own, you could end up having the Switch with Zelda and Mario. Like, that's huge. And and I think also what people have to remember is that Breath of the Wild is not exclusive to the Switch. That's true. It's also a Wii U game, which means that while it would be a killer game at launch, it's hard for me to be like, man, the killer game at the launch of the Switch is a cross-platform game. (laughs) So it almost feels like there's actually room for that Mario game to also be there at launch because it would be exclusive. So like, you might be able to make the argument at launch, I'll just get Breath of the Wild for Wii U, but you can't get the new Mario game for Wii U. 
Um, well, so also, yeah. I can kind of see both scenarios. I, I think if <clears throat> it exists at all, like if Mario's coming at launch, I could see why they might purposely delay Zelda mm-hmm. because Zelda's not an exclusive. Uh, but I can also see a world where just release them both. If they're ready to go, what what you can't have too much, too many good games at the launch of a console. Yeah. Um, you know, Mario and Zombie U is kind of like the big combination for the Wii U. Why can't it be Zelda and Mario? Like, well, that's I, one of the things too. Like, I don't know why you want you want a con- console pusher game to come out as your as your opening sure. release game. So Mario makes sense. Like that's that's probably one the most recognizable name in video games. Oh, um, it's their easily. mascot. For a and uh, so. Like, that makes sense to have that as a system seller. And if you think about it, a lot of people, even some of the people that uh, have commented on our Facebook page, um, have, we have commented on, on our uh, posts, have said that they're probably just going to end up picking up the Wii U version at launch. Like, they, they don't know if they're going to get a Switch yet. So, if, let's say, theoretically, if half of the people pay or pick up the Wii U version and half the people pick up the Switch, that means that it's not pushing systems like... You, like a Mario game would, like they're not getting, yeah, they're not getting. The you don't Switch have to buy the Switch for, to play that yeah. game. That, that's that's kind of like um, if you think about any, not that this is a cross-platform game, but in a way it is. It's like saying, oh, I want Call of Duty specifically for the PlayStation Four, so I'm gonna go buy a PlayStation Four, even though I have an Xbox One. It doesn't really make that much sense to a lot of people. To, to us, to hardcore Nintendo fans, we're like, of course, I'll go buy a Switch day one, even if it's like a brick that says Switch will be here in two months, like. Probably, uh, probably <laughs> that'll be my pre-order, um, but that's that's not for everyone. Not everyone's going to sure. jump on the Switch bandwagon right away, and they're going to want to play Breath of the Wild right, right away, um, because there are fans, and we'll get to this topic a little later with the fan topics. There are fans that feel like they've been burned by Nintendo, um, by oh, for sure. by pushing the release date of Zelda, what was originally Zelda U, way 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 further back than than they ever thought it was going to be, um, and they're also burned by the fact that it's now a cross-platform game and that the quote-unquote definitive edition with a better graphics and better frame rate is going to be on the Switch. Um, <laughs> and so that, you know, that doesn't sit well with them. Um, but moving on, and this, is, this isn't this is really news, but this is something that I kind of want to just, just, like, think about for a second. So very a few days ago, Majora's Mask released on the Wii U Virtual Console. Um, this is like no surprise. They're they're just gonna keep putting out these games um, on the virtual console, but with the Wii U second screen, um, and I know that this is like a you know the Wii U's dying, but mm-hmm. do you think it would have been a better use, or do you think it's okay? Well, two questions. Do you think it would have been a better use to put the 3DS version on the Wii U, or just to um, or do you think it's even worth it to put Majora's Mask on the Virtual Console for the Wii U in general? Like, do you think anyone's really going to play it now? Um, do you think it's really going to be that, like, you know, big of a seller on the Virtual Console? Like, I know it's not really a topic, but I was just kind of thinking about this the other day. Like, when it came out, I was like, okay, but, you know, not that... I, again, I love Majora's Mask, but, like, who really cares that it's on the Wii U Virtual Console now? Um, I mean... <sighs> The Wii U is dying out, so it's easy to argue uh, that adding anything to the virtual library really isn't worthwhile. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't cost Nintendo anything to really do it. Mm-hmm. And they might get some sales. And people might be hoping, like the Wii, that you could transfer these these sales to the, to the Switch in, in some form. Uh, we have no idea if that's going to happen. Hopefully we find out that news in January. But... Uh, I I think I mean like like you said you know bringing the 3ds version over I, I don't really think that that matters to be honest yeah uh, the 3ds version isn't in HD uh, it would have to be remastered again to even make it look good on uh, on a home console and on top of that this is the virtual console so it's supposed to be the classic games as you remember yeah, them that's true um, and Majora's Mask 3D isn't as you remember Majora's Mask. Uh, it was actually funny because I, I was reading a comment on Facebook today about uh, a post that, that we made the other day about uh, how was it? Hyrule Field being remade in Unreal Engine 4. 
which is like the third different version of this we've had posted <laughs> out there. And the comment's like, I don't really like that this version in Unreal Engine 4 looks so glum and, like, you know, looks so dark. And I'm like, well, here is the original trailer for Ocarina of Time, like the, the actual opening for the original game. It's dark. It's glum. In fact, the whole game feels that way. Mm-hmm. And some of that was because the N64 did have kind of an issue where, like, all like all games basically got a little washed a little bit, uh, so it made things appear darker than they were meant to be. So some of that isn't necessarily maybe what the game intended, but that's what the game felt like. So, it, it, you know, I, I look at it, like, with Majora's Mask, it's all bright and everything on the 3DS, just mm-hmm. like Ocarina of Time 3D is, which maybe that's what the original vision vision for the game is, but that's not what me as a player experienced back in 2000. So uh, I, I like that it's the original version. I hate that for some reason they released it and people who have it on their console already aren't getting the $2 thing. Yeah. that's That sucks. Like, discount, that should yeah. never happen. They, they should never release a game on Virtual Console without testing out how well it works with that discount system. Um, to me, that's just a massive oversight. I don't know how that got out of testing to go live. Um, at the same time, the Wii U Virtual Console has been extremely disappointing. And I don't just mean from like a game release standpoint um, and how weird it is that every new console they release, they have to reset the whole Virtual Console. It's just weird. Uh, which I understand why, because they keep changing architecture, but yeah. they really need to streamline that more. And hopefully the Switch is the beginning of, of them doing that. Hopefully. Hopefully. But uh, people, like, anyone who plays the original games or, like, even now if you have the... If you're lucky enough to have the NES Classic Edition, uh, those games look like the games were originally supposed to be... Okay, I will be right back. Apparently I have to come back. Train of thought. could leave this in. Make everybody listen to awkward silence or me talking. Or, oh, okay. So, one of the fan topics. <clears throat> this is a special one. This just Nate's been taken away, and I figured that he might not want to sit through this. I'll just read this until he comes back. So, as some of you know, the uh, there's a meme going around. And it's the B movie. Okay, it's, in my opinion, a horrible film. But apparently, everybody loves it for some reason. So somebody, Jake Davis, on our Facebook page, just said B movie. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the script until Nate comes back. I know it just it sounds horrible. It's a horrible idea. But you're just gonna have to bear with me. Just be patient. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not really. Okay. <clears throat> According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. And then it cuts to this. Yellow, black, yellow, black. Yellow, black, yellow, black. Ooh, black and yellow. Let's shake it up a bit. Barry, breakfast is ready. Coming. Hang on a second. Hello? Barry? Adam? Can you believe this is happening? I can't. I'll pick you up. Look at Sharp. Use the stairs. Your father paid good money for those. Sorry, I'm excited. Here's the graduate. We're very proud of you, son. A perfect report card. All bees. Very proud. Ma, I got a thing going here. You got lint on your fuzz. Ow, that's me. Wave to us. We'll be in row 118,000. Bye. Barry, I told you. Stop flying in the house. Hey, Adam. Hey, Barry. Is that fuzz gel? A little. Special day. Graduation. Never thought I'd make it. Three days grade school. Three days high school. Those were awkward. Three days college. I'm glad I took a day and hitchhiked around the hive. You did come back different. Hi, Barry. Already grown a mustache. Looks good. You hear about Frankie? Yeah. You going to the funeral? No, I'm not going. Everybody knows. Sting someone, you die. Don't waste it on a squirrel. Such a hothead. I guess he could have just gotten out of the way. I love this incorporating an amusement park in our day. That's why we don't need vacation. Boy, quite a bit of pomp under the circumstances. Well, Adam, today we are men. We are bee men. Amen. Hallelujah. Students, faculty, distinguished bees, please welcome Dean Buswell. Welcome, new Hive City graduate class of 915. 
That concludes our ceremony, and now begins your career at Honex Industries. Industries. In, yes. I heard it's just orient. Oh, whoa. Will we pick our job today? I heard it's just orientation. Heads up, here we go. Keep your heads and antennas inside the tram at all times. Wonder what it'll be like. A little scary. Welcome to Hunix, a division of Honesco, and part of the Hexagon Group. This is it. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> we know that you, as a bee, have worked your whole life to get to this point where you can work for your whole life. It's kind of like being a kid, it's like adulthood. That's it's the joke. Honey begins when our valiant pollen jocks bring the nectar to the hive. Our top secret formula is automatically color corrected, scent adjusted, and bubble contoured into this soothing sweet syrup with its distinctive yellow, or sorry, golden glow you know as honey. That girl is hot. She's my cousin, she is. Yes, we're all cousins. Right. You're right. At Hunnux, we constantly strive to improve every aspect of bee existence. These bees are stress testing a new helmet technology. What do you think he makes? Not enough. We have our latest advancement, the Krellman. What does it do? What does that do? Catches the little strands of honey that hangs after you pour it. Saves us millions. Can anyone work on the Krellman? Of course, most bee jobs are small ones, but bees know that every small job, if it's done well, means a lot. But choose carefully, because you'll stay in that job you pick for the rest of your life. The same job for the rest of your life? I didn't know that. What's the difference? You'll be happy to know that bees, as a species, haven't had one day off in 27 million years. So you'll just work us to death? Well, sure try. Kind of like adulthood. Wow, that blew my mind. What's the difference? How can you say that? One job forever? That's an insane choice to have to make. I'm relieved. Now we only have to make one decision in life. But Adam, how could they have never told us that? Uh, why would you question anything? We're bees. We're the most perfectly functioning society on Earth. You ever think maybe things work a little too well here? Like what? Give me one example. I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about. Please clear the gate. Royal Nectar forced on approach. Wait a second. Check it out. Hey, those are pollen jocks. Wow. I've never seen them this close. You know, They know what it's like outside the hive. Yeah, but some don't come back. Hi, jocks. Hey, jocks. You guys did great. You're monsters. You're sky freaks. I love it. I love it. I don't, I'm, I'm either losing my mind or this is how it's it's done. Okay. I wonder where they are. Where they were. I don't know. Their day's not planned. Outside the hive, flying who knows where, doing who knows what. You can't just decide to be a pollen jock. You have to be bred for that. Right. Look, there's more pollen than you and I will ever see in a lifetime. It's just a status symbol. Bees make too much of it. Perhaps, unless you're wearing it and the ladies see you wearing it. Those ladies, aren't they our cousins too? Distant, distant. Look at these two. A couple of hive harries. Let's have fun with them. It must be dangerous being a pollen jock. Yeah, once a bear pinned me against a mushroom. He had a paw in my throat and the other, and with the other he was slapping me. Oh my, I never thought I'd knock him out. What are you doing during this? Trying to alert the authorities. I can autograph that. A little gusty out there, wasn't it, comrades? Yeah, gusty. We're hitting a sunflower patch six miles from here tomorrow. Six miles, huh? Barry, I would jump, I would, a puddle jump for us, but you're not up for it. Maybe I am. You are not. We're going at 0900 at 3, at J-Gate. I might be. It all depends on what 0900 means. Hey, Hunnix. That, oh, honey. That's what it is. Okay, so the transcript I'm reading has, has replaced certain letters with, with other letters for whatever reason. So every Y is an X and every C is an O, and I've been good with the C's, but I, you know, I didn't figure, okay, whatever. Hey, honey, dad, you surprised me. You decide what you're interested in? Well, there's a lot of choices, but you only get one. You ever get bored doing the same job every day? Son, let me tell you about stirring. <clears throat> you grab that stick and you just move it around and you stir it around. You get yourself into a rhythm. It's a beautiful thing. You know, dad, the more I think about it, maybe the honey field just isn't right for me. You were thinking of what, making balloon animals? That's a bad job for a guy with a stinger. Janet, your son's not sure he wants to go into honey. Barry, you are so funny sometimes. I'm trying, not trying to be funny. You're not funny. You're going into honey. Oh my gosh, this is so hard to read. Our son, the stir. You're going to be a stir. No one's listening to me. Wait till you see the sticks I have. I could say anything right now. I'm going to get an ant tattoo. Let's open up some honey and celebrate. Maybe I'll pierce my thorax. Shave my antenna. That sounds very painful. Shack up with a grasshopper. Get a golden tooth and call everybody dog. I'm so proud. We're starting work today. Today's the day. I think there's been a cut here. Come on. All the good jobs will be gone. Yeah, right. Pollen counting, stunt bee, pouring, stirrer, pouring, stirrer, front desk, hair removal. Is it still a thing? Is it still available? Hang on. Two left. One of them's yours. Congratulations. Slip to the side. What'd you get? Taking crud out. Stellar. Wow. Couple of newbies. Yes, sir. First day. We are ready. Make your choice. You want to go first? No, you go. 
Oh my, what's available? Restaurant attendance open. Not for the reason you think. But what reason? What other reason is there? Like what? What else would you would you be? Do? Maybe I'm not getting it. Maybe it's some secret like dirtier joke that I'm not getting. Any chance of getting the the Kremlin? I think that's supposed to be Kremlin, but I'm not sure. Sure, you're on. I'm sorry. The that Kremlin Kremlin just closed out. Wax monkeys always open. It just opened up again. What happened? A bee died. Makes an opening. See? He's dead. Another one. Dead. Dead. Deadified. Two more dead. Dead from the neck up. Dead from the neck down. That's life. Oh, this is so hard. Heating, cooling, stud bee, pour, stir, humming. Inspector number seven, lint coordinator, stripe supervisor, mite wrangler. Barry, what sh do you think I should do? Barry? Barry! All right, we've got the sunflower patch at quadrant nine. What happened to you? Where are you? I'm going out. Out where? Out there. Oh, no. I have to go before I go to work for the rest of my life. You're gonna die. You crazy? Hello. Another call coming in. If anyone's feeling brave, there's a Korean deli on 83rd that gets the roses today. Hey guys, look at that. Isn't that the kid we saw yesterday? Hold it, son. Flight deck's restricted. It's okay, Lou. We're gonna take him up. Really? Feeling lucky, are you? Sign here. Here. Just initial that. Thank you. Okay. We got a rain advisory today, and as you all know, bees cannot fly in rain, so be careful. As always, watch your brooms. Watch for brooms. Honey, hockey sticks, dogs, birds, bears, and bats. Also got a couple of reports of root beer being poured on us. Murphy's in the home because of it babbling like a cicada. That's awful. And a reminder for you rookies, be law number one, absolutely no talking to humans. So we're going on the assumption here that bees could talk. Okay, that's what this whole movie is about. So that bees, bees could talk. And they're influencing human politics. So you're, they're, they're telling me that they can actually communicate with humans and then we're not just hearing them speak like if we're watching the dubbed version of the passion of the christ this is they're, they're actually they're, they're talking english okay so all right launch positions buzz 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 black and yellow hello you ready for this hot show oh okay Think. oh no i don't know yeah, yeah, bring it on. Wind check. Antenna check. Nectar pack. Check. Wings check. Stinger check. Scared out of my shorts. Check. Okay, ladies, let's move it out. Pound those petunias, you striped stem suckers. That's mean. All of you, drain those flowers. Wow, I'm out. I can't believe I'm out. So blue. I feel so fast free. Box kite. Wow, flowers. This is... This is hey. I'm back. It, Nate, you've missed me. I've been reading the B-movie script the entire time. Oh my gosh. Because one of our, one of our audience members, one of our Facebook people, just said the <laughs> B movie for the comments. So I got pretty far in, maybe about mm, two tenths of a way into the script. So uh, that might go up, that might not go up, but we'll see. <laughs> Shall I get back into my train of thought? <laughs> sure. Do you, do you remember what it was? Yes. Okay. Um. So, yeah. So if you look at the Virtual Console, you know, compared to like the NES uh, Classic Edition or uh, even like the original games on the original systems that came out on like Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, etc. Uh, the games on Wii U are not emulated very well. Uh, they have a lot of, oh, I, I guess, input lag. Uh, they're also <laughs> extremely washed out, even more than like the original N64 was. Uh, so, <sighs> the Wii U Virtual Console just isn't good anyways. <laughs> I, <No. laughs> I, my only hope is that they allow you to transfer the game to the Switch and that emulation is fixed on the Switch. Because as it has proven with the NES Classic Edition, Nintendo does know how to emulate their own games really, really well. Uh, just the Wii U does not do that. Yeah. Like, it's it's done well on the 3DS also. Um like we have uh, at least I was playing uh, Adventure of Link the other day, um, and it was it was pretty good. Uh, it's Zelda Two, sorry, the Adventure of Link. And it was really good. Yeah. It was it was well done, emulated on on the 3DS. <laughs> but you're not going to get that type of emulation on uh, on the Wii U. It's, sadly, that's that's just not going to happen. Uh, I, I don't know why. I don't know if Nintendo's ever even said why the emulation is just so bad. I don't know, I, and like you figure, it's it's more than powerful enough to run this stuff. Well, and it's weird because the Wii had okay emulation on it, and then what we have with the Wii U is <laughs> is not, you know, not as great, which is bizarre. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad it's the original version because that's what it should be on a virtual console. 
I, I just, I don't know. I, I guess I'm kind of with you. Like, I, I don't really know why they're still releasing Virtual Console games, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I, <clears throat> I mean, I, like- I mean, I guess, you know, maybe it's to fulfill that promise where they said, hey, we're not done supporting the Wii U. Yeah, if that's the support, then I think they need to be done. Um, <laughs> well, did, weren't they still releasing virtual console, virtual console games on the Wii? Like yeah, two no, years they were. Ago? They they kept going for some reason, yeah. and then they shut down the shop, or the shop doesn't work, or whatever. Might just be yeah, because they, I have homebrew on my Wii, but I think they. Oh, I think they they uh, got rid of all their online services. Okay. So. That might be it, because I know the Wii Connect twenty four thing died a long time ago. Yeah, um, which is I still don't didn't really understand what that was, um, but <laughs> yeah. We're kind of in agreement there. Um, yeah. Nate, have you played yes. Pokemon Sun or Moon yet? No. Okay, well then, you're not going to have too much to say about this topic. Um, but I just wanted to, to talk about impressions and, and if we recommended the game or not. And you've probably seen some of it, so you can make some comments here and there. Um, and I'll keep this brief. Uh, but I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Sun. And one of the things that's impressed me is how different it is from past Pokemon games. And now it's like, there's still a lot of the same things. Like, you catch Pokemon, you're, you know, you're training them, you're evolving them. Um, but there's no gyms. Um, there, there's, there's the island trials, there's, um, you know, the, the Z moves, there's Team Skull, there's the other founder. I'm, I'm still not, like, I'm maybe about halfway through the game. Um, I've been swamped because Steam Sale happened and I got a little crazy. Um, but, Things happen. Yeah. But, I, you know, I love... Ruby and Sapphire, that's probably my favorite series, or favorite generation was Generation 3. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for that, but that was my favorite one. <laughs> um, I think that's that's really really when I got into Pokemon like as a game. Like I played it on, on the Game Boy, um, and I collected the cards, but I never really got super into the game until like I just fell in love with Ruby and Sapphire. Um, and so I loved stuff that was in uh, you know the, the remakes the, for the 3DS, um, but it still wasn't like, okay, this is something new, something we haven't seen before. Pokemon Sun and Moon, on the other hand, is something new that we haven't really seen before. And while it still has a lot of the old in it, um, it has enough new to feel fresh. Um, it has a fresh story to it, kind of like X and Y did. Um, while there was still like the, you know, evil team that had whatever world domination plans, there was still like a story about a guy and his Pokemon, um, and then the war and all that stuff. So, um, if you're if you're still looking for a game this holiday to play. <laughs> on your 3DS and to still to buy something for that console or the handheld and go get Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, it's a great game. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, you know, we're not paid to say this. I'm just saying that I really liked the game. If Nintendo gave me money to say it, I, you know, I'd still say it. <laughs> um, but they're they're not going to contact us on that. So from there, we're going to go to our fan topics. And you guys already heard the B movie one. Um, I'm hoping that I decided to keep that in there, <laughs> depending on how long it took. I think it was about five, ten minutes, maybe. Um, Something like that. Yeah, you know, however long it took me to put my kids back to bed. <laughs> yeah, that we had the whole, we had the first maybe two, <laughs> two tenths of the B movie there. Okay, so fan topics. All these come from Facebook. Uh, our first one is actually a pretty good one. Uh, so this is more of a an abstract one. It's not really a question, it's just a topic. So Kendra Moat says, "There's so much talk about the games themselves. Maybe focus on the interpersonal." relationships between characters you could discuss how in-game relationships and the stories from previous games could be used to make a zelda franchise worthy movie it's a pretty abstract idea but i think a lot of legend of zelda fans not only enjoy the character development that is commonplace in the games but can relate to the series more through it so basically not i guess this is in response to our our uh movie like movie idea Mm -hmm. um so her point is that the driving force behind Zelda has has not really been the story because the story's been very, you know, aside from a few other games, the story's been pretty singular. You know, Zelda gets kidnapped or a form of Zelda gets kidnapped and you have to go save her or something happens to Zelda and you have to go save her. Um, But the thing that makes the games is the characters' interactions. And that can influence the story and affect the story, kind of like we saw in Majora's Mask. Um, and how the characters interacted with each other um, in, in different ways. Um, but she seems to say that the character relationships are what really drives Zelda for her and for other people. Um, so what do you think about that, Nate? Uh, she's not wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the game that a lot of people praise for its story 
uh, really exemplifies her point, and that's Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we talk about Majora's Mask maybe a bit more of this podcast <laughs> than I plan to, but uh, reality is that, that that's usually considered to have one of the better stories in Zelda, and, and the main story in it, it's cute, it's nice, uh, but what makes it really work is the, the character interactions. Mm-hmm. Um, and making you care and invest in that world. Uh, it's actually, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, there's, there's a new TV series out called Westworld. Mm-hmm. I heard about it on I HBO. It, yeah. um, I just started watching it. You know, I think it's like eight or nine episodes in now, and I'm I'm on episode three. Uh, and you know, the the premise of that of that show is basically a bunch of rich people um, and this like company that created fake people. Uh, to give rich people like their own little Western fantasy, hence called Westworld. Um, and these fake people, you know, they're, they're not real people, but like they start remembering things and having like people like emotions and stuff. And uh, they get all that through character interactions and like, you know, interacting with the rich people that pay to come, you know, ha- have fun in this world. Um, you know, or, or even sometimes they get it from interactions with, you know, other fake characters. And I kind of look at Zelda's story kind of in the same way, where what makes you really invest in the world are the characters. And it, it, it's really weird saying that because this is a game where the story usually doesn't give you a lot to go off of. Um, you know, as you said, go save the princess. That That's very Mario-esque. <laughs> um, Peach has been kidnapped. Go deal with it. Uh, there's not a lot of driving force necessarily with that initial story, especially like... You know, in Ocarina of Time, you know, Zelda's taken away or running away with Impa, uh, with Ganondorf chasing her, but up to that point, you really have no reason to give a hoot about Zelda. <laughs> um, yeah, you met her once. Okay. You, th- th- there's nothing even about that encounter that makes you be all, yeah, I should really, really, really care about this character. Not really. Uh, she kind of tells you that maybe you're important, but okay. Sort of the great Deku tree and I cared way more about him than I did her uh and he was dead by that point in the well, game kind of kind I'm sorry kind of dead uh mostly so dead. It, yeah it, it's one of those things where uh Zelda doesn't really necessarily have like this lot of individual drive usually associated uh maybe the Wind Waker did it best uh by kind of by a default drive because the very first character you meet in the Wind Waker is your sister mm. and she's the one that gets kidnapped so that's kind of your drive, uh, is because you want to go save her. Like this is the very first character you met in the entire game. Well, she matters. And you, she's your yeah, sister. And, and you know, and you know right away. Like you're introduced right away. This is your biological sister. Like you, you know, you were the big brother, and your grandma is old and can't do anything about the fact she was captured. So like it's kind of on you to go do something, um, and it really makes you care. So that that's kind of a unique situation. But again. A character interaction is what made me care about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I kind of agree with her. And, and I think if uh, Zelda, like a Zelda movie or a Zelda, you know, even like a TV show, is ever going to take off as a real thing, like I still believe it needs to be its own original concept and all that. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be how they handle character interactions. Because, like, that's how, like, even Westworld or Game of Thrones, like, these big production HBO shows, they work because of character interaction. Yeah. And I'd equate that, too. Like, um, say what you will about this season, because I haven't actually watched the past two episodes, but The Walking Dead is mostly about how the characters interact. Sure. Um, That's what makes you care about that show. That makes you, up until this point, probably, for a lot of people. Um, But... Yeah, I haven't watched any of the season yet. I I didn't like last season much. Um, The... (laughs) <laughs> the, the you watch the show for the characters not because it's got zombies in it like I've always described it to people as a drama with zombies not a zombie show with with drama in it um, yeah, yeah because it's kind of like everything is happening around them and they're not like directly involved we're just seeing how this group of people moves through it and that's kind of how I'd view you know um like in as in Zelda it's it's more like they're more involved but at the same time like focus more on the characters focus more on who they are, what their motivations are, what drives them, kind of a thing, because that's what really uh, pushes, you know, a story is the characters. Yeah. If if you can have a great idea for a story, but unless the characters are involved, unless the characters are into it, unless they're fully fleshed out, you're gonna have a really dry, really bland story. No matter how great the plot sounds, the characters need to be fleshed out for it. Um, and so I agree too. I think that the characters have been like, and their relationships are the most important part of a Zelda game. 
Because, yes. like, for example, even Twilight Princess, like, our Link's relationship with Midna um, is kind of like the, not the foundation for the game, but it is, in a way, the foundation for the game. Because we don't know a yeah. thing about Zelda in that game. We don't have a reason to really sure. care about her. Our our goal halfway through the game becomes about Midna. Like, when she gets sick, we're taking her to Zelda to get healed. Um, mm. And and it's, it's the relationship between the two, whether it's forced, whether it's uh, voluntary... That's still the driving force behind that part of the game. Yeah. And again, like you said, uh, same thing. Like, Ilya is the equivalent of Errol, except not really our sister. Um, yeah. She, her kidnapping puts us on the quest. And so it's, it's yeah. the, the character interactions that really drive it, because the story is pretty much samey. Like, you're not really getting anything yeah. different from, from game to game, aside from, like, Majora's Mask or Breath of the Wild. I mean, even look at Breath of the Wild, uh, you know, I know you just mentioned it as a little different. Is it really? The well, story we know so far is... We sealed a dark beast away, and he's about to break free and destroy the world. Sounds like a link to the past to me. <laughs> yeah, like 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 it, it sounds very much like a very classic, typical Zelda story. That's what we think. Um, that's what we know. The only thing that's weird about it, the only thing that's different, is there's that voice talking to you, mm-hmm. which you know a lot of people presume is Zelda. But as Darren so aptly pointed out in the staff chat yesterday, uh, it's not confirmed she's Zelda. So it doesn't even confirm she's a girl, to be honest. Um, we just kind of infer based on the tonal tone of the voice, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it, it's one of those things where I, I I think you know we brought up a lot of really good examples of like good TV shows or you know mostly good TV shows, but even, even movies um, that really focus on the characters. Like you know, say what you want about say like the Harry Potter series mm-hmm. of movies. You know, I know some people who didn't really like it because you know, hey, books forever, <laughs> um, and that's fine. The books are. I, I think the uh, most people could say the books are objectively better than the movie series. Yeah. Uh, but what made the movies work for those who, who weren't really book readers is character interactions. You cared about Ron, Hermione, and Harry because of how they interacted together and how they interacted with the other characters. And if you cared about the other characters, you did it through the interactions of those three characters with that particular character. Um, and, and that's kind of what makes us care in Zelda. And, I, you know, I know we brought up some good examples, but my fear... And this will always be my fear if, if Zelda becomes a TV show, especially if it becomes a TV show. Is one of my all time favorite book series ever is the Sword of Truth series. It is an amazing book series. I still haven't finished I don't know why I haven't finished it. Maybe I just my life got busy growing up. Um but it, it's a ton of books. I can't remember if I was book five or six. Uh but just a fantastic, fantastic story. And in fact now that I bring it up, I'm probably gonna just start all over again at book one. <laughs> Um, but they made it into a television series uh, called Legend of the Seeker. And Legend of the Seeker tried to take the books, which were very character-based, very character-interactive-based, and it kind of sort of tried to make it into like those old Hercules and Xena shows, mm-hmm. uh, which those old Hercules and Xena shows worked really, really well at the time. Um, but... Th- you, you you try taking a heavy story, heavy narrative, heavy character interaction based uh, book, and try to condense it down into like all these little side quest stories that nobody cares about because you don't know. Like every episode, you're just meeting new characters that you mm-hmm. no context on why you should care about them. And I think if that it would have been more like a Hercules or a Xena, that's different because there's legends that stuff is based on, but none of that's based on a book. Uh, or, or like a long ongoing series, whereas Legend of the Seeker was based on a, this giant massive book series, you know, called the Sword of Truth series, and it it, it was like a disservice to well, the book. You also have to think about the the director and, and the creator of that. Sure, um, Sam Raimi. Like, yeah, I'm I'm not his biggest fan. Sure, um, he has he did do the Evil Dead, the Evil Dead Two, Army of Darkness, which are you know cult classic films. Yeah, um, but they're not really like. Like man, that that char- like Ash is such a deep character. Like that's not why you watch the show. <laughs> maybe why you watch the, the the TV show. Maybe not why you watch the movies. Um, sure. And you know, and, and that's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I liked the Legend of Seeker show as its own show. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like I, I really liked the old Xena and Hercules shows. So like I liked what this show was doing. It just should not have been doing it with this universe. And and I worry that if Zelda becomes a TV show, that it might try to do this little side questy kind of every episode of the side quest that barely progresses the main overall like story arc mm-hmm. um and, and 
you know, if you look at the good shows out there, the shows that have lasting power, like Legend of the Seeker went two seasons. I mean, yeah, Hercules and Xena lasted a lot longer back in the day, but that was back in the day. Would those kind of shows last today? Probably, Probably not. not. No. And because and, things have gotten better. I mean, you bring up The Walking Dead. Yeah, it, it it doesn't always feel like there's a lot of like forward momentum with the story arc, but that's because the series is setting things up in every single episode yeah. that leads to that. And Legend of the Seeker wasn't doing that. And mm-hmm. I worry that that's what's going to happen uh, if a Zelda series does that, where, you know, yeah, it, obviously it comes down a lot, a lot down to director and, and direction of it, and you would think they'd be a lot more careful, but they also, like, Legend of the Seeker tried to be a lot more playful and a lot more like, let's just make this show for everyone. And, like, Nintendo likes doing that. <laughs> So I almost worry that, like, Zelda isn't the right kind of series, I think, to do that with. I think Zelda needs to have more of a The Walking Dead or, like, an HBO or e- even, like, a serious, like, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be super serious, but, you know, k- kind of like a House of Cards, Netflix. Like, it, it needs to be kind of one of those high-budget um, shows that takes itself seriously because the fans take Zelda seriously. Yeah, I think the, um, the way to do that, before we got a Zelda film, we'd probably... And, and this is just, again, wishful thinking, is that we'd get some sort of Metroid film. Um, <laughs> because that that is a more... One of their more story-steeped games. Um, Metroid's weird. It is. But it has a story to it. it. Yeah, it, it does. But, like, 90% of every Metroid game has nothing to do with the story. I know. but like the, So, like, that's why, like, when you're like, oh, I'd like to see a Metroid game, it's like, why? The entire story of Metroid can be told in, like, 20 minutes. But like, still, there really but is not a lot of story that, to Metroid. That could be like an hour long, like Netflix film that they do. Yeah, like maybe a film. Yeah, maybe like, like a, one, saying, a one-off film. I'm not saying a sure. TV series. I'm saying like that could be like a foray into film for them, and then go from there. Like, well, that's that's an inherently dark series or dark game. Um, so maybe they'd be like, okay, well, did the audience respond well to a dark Metroid or a serious Metroid? Um, and if they did, maybe we'd get a more serious Zelda game. Like, I'm sure there's going to be, like, laughs and stuff in it. Um, like, Daredevil well, yeah. and, and uh, Luke Cage are very serious shows, but, they, you know, they still have funny Oh, they got, they got comedy. Yeah. There's comedy. Um, Even Jessica Jones. Yeah. That whole universe. Like, they're, they all they all mix serious with comedy pretty well. But, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Like, I, I'd like to see that from a Zelda series. Um, but I, I think that they'd try... You know, again, they don't really value Metroid that much, obviously. Um, <laughs> right. That they would probably put that out there as like their hopefully as their first four random films and be like, okay, well, how did this do? Do people like it? Uh, yeah. It see, I think honestly, their first four is going to be like an animated Mario movie. I think it's going to be an animated Zelda film or animated Zelda series or something. But... I mean, it's going to be Zelda Mar. I mean, they already have Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, they, they've had that for a long time, but like, I think. If, if they're going to do a movie or anything at all, it's going to be... One, it has to be an IP that has a big enough fan base that they can guarantee sellouts day one. Mm-hmm. Um, Zelda and Mario are kind of it. Like, I want to say, you know, oh, Fire Emblem has a big audience. I'm like, yeah. That's, that's like, a niche it audience. Still feels, it still feels niche. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the thing. A lot of Nintendo's IPs are actually pretty niche. Metroid itself is niche. Yeah. It, the number one game would... Like, the most sold game ever was like 4.2 million units and that was Metroid Prime and that would be considered very bad sales for Breath of the Wild <laughs> if that if that's like yeah. what Breath of the Wild sold so like just the expectations and the audience size just isn't really there for Metroid I think to pull off a film is like a, a first go to uh, but like an animated Zelda you know an, an animated Mario which you know, they they used to have like the the Super Mario Super Show back in the day. Oh boy! Like you know, trying to you know, I know there's not a lot of story. Like Zelda makes more sense to to become a movie, I think, than Mario well, does. Yeah. But Mario's also more popular, and as they kind of proved with those Pikmin shorts, you don't really need to have a lot of story to make something entertaining. Well, and, and say what you will about it, Sonic Boom the show is actually kind of good. It is it, it, not kind of. It, it's legit. It, good. it is good. It has genuinely and here's funny the thing. moments in it. I, I thought I thought it was gonna be bad, but I, maybe I'm just bad. I liked the old Sonic cartoon. Oh I did too. Which one? I thought it was a, like a very good cartoon. Like the with Jaleel White? Okay, well they all yeah. have Jaleel White. But um like I liked got, Sonic Underground. Got I get those liked, chili dogs. Yeah I liked Sonic Underground. I liked the the original Sonic show. Like those were good. But also like Sonic Boom it's, it, okay, we'll put it this way. It's not like Teen Titans Go. It's not a train wreck. Um, that's an yeah. awful show in every way. It's it's good. <laughs> and as much as people... like That that kind of thing would function for a Mario show. I feel like they could pull off a Mario show in the Sonic Boom style where it's like, 
a week by week type of thing. Like, there's no overarc. There could be an overarching story, but it could be very loose. Yeah. See, um, that, so again, like what Legend of the Seeker did, I think works for an animated Mario show mm-hmm. because there really doesn't have to be an overarching like. Here's the, a general story where it, we know an end is coming. Like you're gonna know the trope is always gonna be, oh, Peach got kidnapped again. Yeah. Or you know, like like you mm-hmm. always know, like it'll become a trope in that of itself. Kind of kind of like uh, <laughs> like they tried to do with the Zelda show with Excuse Me Princess. Yeah. Um, it, it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it worked but, years uh, later. <laughs> yeah. It's popular right. now. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I could see that, you know, Mario working more as a TV show than a movie. And Zelda, I think, makes a lot more sense as, like, a movie series, although I think it can work as a TV show. Especially, as I said, the Netflix HBO style where un- no commercials, each episode literally is an hour. Because um, I think, you know, it, it would have to be heavy character and story interactions. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I feel like we've had this whole conversation before because we were you know cast in yeah. a movie and we had to kind of decide what kind of movie did we want it to be um okay well we're gonna but, hit on one more topic then we're gonna get into our final oh thing boy. um this topic comes from john mccann it says as Uh-oh. zelda continues to make the push forward in the modern age of gaming how does the sense of wonder and the mystery compare to other adventure rpg titles such as skyrim and the witcher on top of that how is it that the essence of zelda has never been able to be truly replicated it's tough to talk about a game as like Zelda because it really is one of a kind. Um, and I, I think most of that, like a lot of that has to do with what we just talked about in terms of character. Um, and this is one of my things with, with a lot of early Nintendo games is that a lot of the games had character. They had characters, but a lot of those characters had character. Like there's specific things about them like that you would recognize. Um, there's specific things about them that are I, just... Yeah, no, to, to touch on that point because, you know... It's easy to argue that a lot of Nintendo's new IPs over the years haven't had like that kind of magic, um, except for Splatoon. No, I know. I'm, I'm not. I don't know how Splatoon. Yeah, I don't know how Splatoon did it because like your actual character that you are really doesn't matter. Well, it's not necessarily that. It's like the mannerisms of the character and how they yeah. act and what they do and how they look. Yeah. And that's one of the things. Like you'll hear me if anybody brings this up at any point, I will rant on it forever. But that's my problem with Luigi's Mansion to Dark Moon. Luigi's Mansion, each ghost had its own character, like the, the portrait ghosts. They were different. They had things that they talked about. They looked different. They had different ways of acting and going about what they did. Whereas Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, all, all of the ghosts were pretty much the same. Um, there really wasn't a lot of... Like, there was character in them, but it was, like, one character. Like, they were all, like, pretty much the exact same type of ghost. Um, and that was what was missing for me was, like, those portrait ghosts and those characters... I mean, even, like, uh, you brought up Splatoon. Characters don't have to talk to have, have that, like, character about it that, that makes it memorable. Like, uh... Well, plus, like, there are side characters in there. I mean, you can't forget the news crew. Yeah. <laughs> and and even like, in... like, they have very um, specific personalities and looks um, that, especially when you're in Japan, like, you instantly recognize it. They have billboards of that stuff everywhere. Yeah. And the thing is, like... There's a reason why when we saw in the Breath of the Wild footage the Karoks come back, why we got excited for that, is because they're characters that we recognize as as being playful and and, and having something that's familiar to us. Um, and it's almost meaningful. Yeah, it's meaningful, and that's one of the things that a lot of these games don't have is you know you go from uh, Fallout to Fallout Two to Fallout Three to Fallout Four, and like yeah, there's the Brotherhood of Steel and stuff, but you're never like, oh yay, I'm so excited to see the Brotherhood of Steel. It's just, like, it's something that you get used to and it's something that's recurring, but it, it doesn't have, like, that kind of magic to it. And I can't really speak on behalf of The Witcher because I've only played parts of The Witcher 3. Um, but I don't know if there's... Again, there's probably not that same type of magic where you see those characters and they you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited that they're back, kind of a thing. Um, uh, there is in The Witcher. There is? Okay. Yeah, the, the Witcher 1, 2, and 3 has a lot of continuity between the characters. Um that like there's characters that pop up in Witcher Three that you haven't even seen since Witcher One, and you just get like pumped that they okay. somehow found their way back into the story. And that's um, that, that's what I'm talking about. Like that kind yeah. of stuff is what makes Zelda like is makes part of what makes it so special is that there's those characters that sure. we remember. Because um, like we were talking about, like you don't remember Zelda like man, that story really resonated with me like deep inside. Like him rescuing the princess helped me defeat my inner demons because I am the princess and I need rescuing. It's not like mm-hmm. you, you don't. It's not you don't identify with that like that. You're like, oh well, this character, like, um, gosh, what was his name? The guy that was always trying to work out in Skyward Sword that was trying to like <laughs> be better, like that kind of a character, like something 
someone with that memorable of, of a presence. Um, and that, so memorable, you don't remember his name. Yeah, you know. I remember what he looks like. Um, but uh, it, He's the Biff Tannen of Zelda. If, if you know what I'm talking about, like he like that kind of a thing. Like the characters, the, the characterization of the characters are what really makes the game special. Um, and how sure. they act, like even even Ganondorf himself, like the the pure evil type, like that's 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 memorable. That's like it's it's awesome to see. It's awesome to hear. Um, I mean, I don't really know if I'm explaining this well. Like like you said, it's it's really tough to talk about a game as like Zelda because it, it really is one of a kind. There's really not a lot of words you could say like to describe what really makes it special. I mean, you can always say it's Nintendo. Nintendo has. That special brand of magic that, that they do Nintendo with every game. Magic. Yeah. Um, see, I, I, I kind of disagree. I think there's a lot of games that are like Zelda. Uh, I, I think um, the reason people don't don't realize it, I guess, is because they don't... Uh, everyone plays Zelda for a different reason, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, we, we just went on and on about the story. To be honest, I don't give two craps about Zelda's story. That's not why I play Zelda. No, games. that's what I'm saying. I, nobody um, plays it for the but, story. But but like I could talk deep and passionately about the story uh, because of how big of a fan I am and how closely. You know, yeah, I might not play the game because of the story. It doesn't mean I don't pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is part partially why I don't really care about spoilers because like I think the only thing you can really spoil in a game to me is story. And since Zelda story is always so simplistic, anyways, <laughs> what are you really spoiling that I don't expect to happen regardless? Yeah. Um, that's why I, I I don't really care about story spoilers for Zelda, but. It's one of those where I think there's been plenty of games like Zelda. Uh, it's just those games uh, more define who they are uh, targeting, per se. Nintendo tries to take Zelda and literally make it target everyone. Mm-hmm. And arguably, that's been one of the biggest cruxes of the series, as they're trying to please too many people at once, and they end up not pleasing anybody very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that... So you can say what you want. Like, I love Skyward Sword, but th- there's so many people that hate Skyward Sword. Yeah. And it, it, they tried to make that game appeal to literally everyone who bought a Wii. <laughs> um, and that's just a bad... Like, you can't Blue Ocean Zelda. But that's what they tried to do. And you can argue that's what they've been trying to do for a long time. Um, I mean, they have Blue Ocean Wind Waker. They, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, no, so you could see where they were trying to, you know, do that. Like, you can even argue with Wind Waker. Yeah, it's not really a kitty game, but that art style choice was meant to appeal to a younger audience. Yeah. Um, even if they were trying to make it, you know, serious enough for adults and everything, regardless, they were trying to expand Zelda's reach with that game. Um, and they don't need to do that with Zelda. But Nintendo keeps doing it. And uh, sometimes I love them for it. Other times I'm like, eh, you're kind of hurting the series' popularity by what you're doing, which is the exact opposite of what they think is going to happen when they do it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, beside, beyond that, beyond Zelda sometimes having, I, I, I guess I, I think sometimes Zelda has an identity crisis with itself. Mm-hmm. Um, the creators, like, now we're getting this giant open-world Zelda game, which we haven't had since 1986. <laughs> So it's like it's been thirty years, and now we're getting back to what Zelda used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's really weird uh, well, what Zelda does, and, it's weird to and that's say why, that... like for me, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, there's not any games like Zelda because no other franchise can get away with having this many identity crises over thirty years. Well, it's weird to say um, it's getting Triforce back. Heroes level based multiplayer. What other franchise could throw that out there and get away with it and not kill itself? Well, they try you to know, do what, what other expansion. franchise can keep a top-down and a 3D thing going that do entirely different things? Um, so the, in that way, Zelda is very, very unique uh, and somehow has gotten away with it over all these years. I don't know if Zelda fans just have a lot of patience <laughs> or if Zelda fans are slowly becoming more like me where we just enjoy so many different types of games that it's really hard for them to make a Zelda game I'm not going to enjoy. Uh, not just because Zelda's on it, but just because I enjoy all these different types of games. I love Link's Crossbow Training, but I love arcade shooty-shooty things. And that's what Link's Crossbow Training is. <laughs> so, like, how could I not like an arcade shooty-shooty thing when I already like those and it's Zelda-branded? Like, I'm going to like it. It's just, I'm weird like that. Um, but the, I, I think in terms of what Zelda does at its core, which I know people have a hard time trying to figure out what that core is, uh, I think there are other games that do do that. Uh, they just aren't as scattered as Zelda is in identifying what that game is. Uh Here's a series that, that, that you love that literally compared itself to uh, 
to Zelda Darksiders. Yep. That's what I was thinking. That game is it's literally like structure point for structure point a Zelda game. Yeah. But they do enough different things with yeah. it to create kind of their mm-hmm. own vibe and they very much know what that game is and they continue that in the Darksiders 2. And if a Darksiders 3 ever happens, it's going to continue that in the Darksiders 3. Like they have a continuity to it all that Zelda doesn't always have because Zelda's a very fragmented. Each game yeah. typically stands on its own. You don't need to have any prior knowledge. And that's true with like even The Witcher, you know, you don't need to play other Witcher games to play Witcher 3, but you're going to get more out of it if you yeah. have. It's um, thing like um have uh, what was I thinking about? Um, like, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, we're going back to what Zelda used to be because Zelda was only really like this once, mm-hmm. and maybe twice if you want to count a Link to the Past. No, Link to the Past wasn't even close. Yeah, so like it, this, it was only like this once. So Zelda's never really used to be anything. We're just kind <laughs> of returning to 1986 with this game. Exactly. Um, and, and that to me, it exemplifies. I, I guess maybe what makes Zelda so unique is it can get away with this. Yeah. Like, this isn't what Zelda has been in 30 years. And now it's that again, and everyone's excited for it. And it's like, maybe that's what it should be. I mean, some people think maybe this is what Zelda should have been the whole time. Um, you know, it could have been literally the Skyrim of open world games and just be the definition of open world. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's not the direction the series went in. So, Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I don't really disagree with you on any of that. I know it's kind of boring that I don't disagree yeah, with Yeah, I know. Um, well, it, you know, and, and just like other examples, like a lot of people think Dark Souls is what Zelda would have been if it would have stayed with what Zelda 1 established. And I could see that. You play Dark Souls, it has a very Zelda 1-like feel to yeah. it. And you could argue that's a Zelda-like game, even though it feels like the polar opposite of what is It's difficult at first starters, <laughs> which Zelda games usually aren't. Uh, but you know, it, it's just it, it's a very Zelda esque experience if you play the very first game, or you know you, you could even look at like Shovel Knight. That's a very Zelda two like mm-hmm. experience. Like there are <laughs> Zelda like games out there in different skins. It's just those games and those series know what they are and they stick to it. What makes Zelda, I guess, quote unquote special? I just air quoted. I hate air quotes. <laughs> is uh, is the fact that it's gotten away with not really defining exactly what it is over 30 years. Is it a multiplayer game? Is it uh, you know a single-player game that's heavily story-based? Is it a, a top-down game? Is it linear? Is it open world? You know, there are all these different words you can use to describe Zelda because Zelda changes what it is with every single release. And their excuse uh, for that is that it's a legend and legends change as they get passed down. Which, but this is all gameplay. So I, no, I know, I know. I'm just saying, yeah. like that's 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 their excuse. It's for a that. bad excuse. It's um, a bad excuse. But yeah, like I, I'd say, like we've talked about uh, the, when the Dark Souls creator said that it's not uh, a fair comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it kind of is because. Well, I, I think he was just trying to say, yeah. like, out of respect for Zelda, we should not be compared to yeah. Zelda. Could you imagine, though, like, in a parallel universe, if Zelda had taken the route of Dark Souls and just gotten, like, extremely dark and harder than it is right now? Yeah, what about it? Like, could you just imagine that, like, universe? Like, it, Yep. That'd be an interesting interesting place to live in. Because I think <laughs> Zelda would be a lot different than it is now. I don't even know. I don't know if it'd be a... Household name, though. And I think that's the thing, is that... Um, like- I think it would have been a household name uh, for totally different reasons. Like, if you look at the series, right, Zelda 1 was really, really popular. Yes. Zelda 2, for very obvious reasons, even though I love it... Was not. Was not as popular. A Link to the Past was even less popular than Zelda 2. Like, everyone's like, A Link to the Past is this big pinnacle. It actually undersold the previous two games. So... Like, the series was losing popularity. It, it kept changing what the, you know, like, only for the past, oh, that's a return to what the first game is. Kind of. Not really. It, it got, re- it's not truly open world, um, but, I mean, it kind of sort of is. Like, it, it, it really wasn't what the first game was. So, yeah, people loved it, but, again, that was, you know, a, a downtrend in the series. <laughs> uh, you know, Link's Awakening did okay, but, again, first Zelda game on a handheld. I get pretty much every first game in a series on the Game Boy did really, really well back then. Mm-hmm. And then Ocarina of Time came out, which redefined, again, you know what people expected of the series and then overtook Zelda 1 as the number one selling Zelda game. And then if you look at sales, outside of Twilight Princess, it's kind of been on decline again ever since. Um, 
And a lot of that is because even in those early games, Zelda just did not define what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, as I said, I, I guess that's what makes Zelda special is that it doesn't have a true definition for what it is. I mean, it's an action adventure game. Outside of that, like well, pure genre definition. I think one of the and even then, you, it dabbles into RPG now at times. Well, you mentioned that that it tries to apply to or uh, appeal to everyone, and that's one of its downsides. But I also think that's one of its benefits because I know that as a kid, if Zelda was a rated R or rated R rated M Dark rated Souls esque game, I probably wouldn't have been able to play it. Like I wouldn't have been into Zelda as a kid because. I, yeah, but if you look at today, the, the most popular game, games among kid, kids no, besides, I, like, Minecraft are, rated, are I, like, rated I know. I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, as a kid back in the 90s or back in the 80s when this, like, back when age ratings mattered to parents. I don't know if age ratings ever mattered. I mean, they, they did to most people that I knew. Um, but still, like, okay. there's okay. a lot of people that, like, I'm, of course, I'm in the Bible Belt of Texas, so. You know, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I'm in my own of, little bubble here. It, you um, got a little, little religion bubble there. Help me. Video games of the devil. (laughs) Um, I'm a libertarian trapped in a Republican state. Um, Oh my god! (laughs) But it's it's kind of like that. I I don't know if it would have been as pop. Like I don't know if that's something that like you know parents would have played with their kids or kids would have played with their parents if it wasn't you know based around like you know it's it's still dark. Ocarina of Time was dark, but it was still like this is still kind of a game for kids. Um, and so it is its downfall because it holds it back, but it also spreads its appeal, which it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Like the, it's again, it's not. Yeah. Good well, as I said, um, the, the, the problem with like the game spreading its appeal is that it usually doesn't work. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It, when you try to, um, it actually fractured the fan base even more, uh, which, uh, like if you look at breath of the wild, right? I don't look at breath of the wild as a game that's trying to appeal to everyone. It certainly didn't feel like that when I played the demo. Well, it's not because a lot of people are upset with the way that it's going. They say it's yeah, too Western. Like, this feels like a game that is appealing, <clears throat> one, to gamers who are heavily experienced in games. Mm-hmm. Because you need to be if you're going to get good at this game. Uh, two, it's appealing to veterans of the series who are fans of other open world games, like The Witcher or Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Uh, and three... They're trying to make it feel as natural of an evolution from Zelda 1 as they can. Nintendo's own website has been releasing comparisons to Zelda 1. Like, very clearly, they are trying to capture what Zelda 1 captured. Mm -hmm. And Zelda 1, I know that, you know, a lot of people played it as a kid. They had that, you know, yeah, that that Zelda rap commercial with kids (laughs) and everything. Like, but Zelda 1 today would not be a kid's game. Back then, all games were hard. So it really didn't matter. But, like, in today's realm, you know, that's not the case. Kids are playing games on, like, tablets and stuff. They're not introduced to these super difficult games. Or Like, the original Mario Brothers is, is a pretty difficult well, game. that's what I'm saying. Like, depending on, like, because of when it was released and because of, like, how games were viewed back then, I don't know if Zelda would have flown as a rated M Dark Souls type game. Oh, you don't have to be rated M to be, like, Dark Souls. No, I know. But, I mean, like, just, like, that type of game, like, that... Uh, like for for the purpose of what an illustration I was using, like a rated M game in Dark yeah. Souls. Like I don't know if it would have been as widely received or as popular as it is now. Even though it's still niche, it's it's still pretty popular. Um, I don't know if it would have been as as, as popular as it is now had it not had the roots it does. Um, because say what you will, Dark Souls is a very niche game. Like sure. that's not that doesn't apply to everyone. Like I know people that will not play that game. Um, <laughs> Whether because it's hard or not, but um, well, it it's very interesting because it, you know Zelda, you know we've been talking about the identity, identity crisis it's had, you know whether or not it's been a good thing or not, you know because Nintendo's goal has always been to try to make Zelda like Mario mm-hmm. and literally be for everyone, and that's been kind of a divisive thing that's split the fan base over the years. Uh, well, even when they tried but, not to make it for everyone. It, people still split up over it. What, what what game is that? You want to say Twilight Princess or Wind Waker? The the, the it, it, you know the funny thing about Twilight Princess that was more for everyone than all their other games were How so? because Twilight Princess was a rec- recognition of the gaming market in North America at the time where kids were playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Kids were playing you know Morrowind. Kids were playing these realistic hardcore looking games. Uh, they were not playing Mario 
or stuff like that. In fact, it turned out that people still playing Mario were soccer moms and, you know, you know, older adults that grew up with it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even a lot of kids playing Mario at that time. Uh, that might have changed now. I don't know. I still, when, whenever I see a kid with a, with a DS or 3DS, I still never see them playing Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still wonder if Mario is even appealing to kids anymore. Um, but the, you know, in, in terms of Zelda, I, I just... Twilight Princess just felt like it was going with the times. Lord of the Rings was really big. Um, and because of that, Twilight Princess sold really, really well. And I think Twilight Princess really felt more like for everyone than people want to believe. Like, Nintendo believes the Wind Waker is more for everyone. Mm-hmm. Twilight Princess was rated T, so it's for adults. But that's not actually how the world works, like, to, even today. Kids, like, I, I was just talking to uh, a seven-year-old at uh, my other job. Because I work at elementary school, and she was just asking me, you know, to name to name some movies. So here I am naming like Trolls, Frozen, Aladdin. You know, just go through all these kid movies that I've seen. And all of a sudden, she's like, "Hey, have you seen Suicide Squad?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Yeah, so have I. I went to the movie theater for it. It's awesome." And I'm just like, "What the heck is a seven year old going to Suicide Squad?" Yeah, totally inappropriate in my mind. But that's the thing, kids are consuming this kind of content sooner and sooner and sooner and wanting more and more of it which i don't know if that is necessarily a bad thing per se because like kids that when i was you know i kept thinking when i was younger kids were going to rated our movies i guess mm-hmm. i didn't think much of it back then you know of course back then it wasn't so much nudity or anything you know some swearing but it's violence there was, really. a, there was already swearing and violence going on in the playground man yeah um but it <laughs> Like, I think that's what Twilight Princess was actually catering exactly to that everyone audience, and Nintendo just can't realize that. Um, and, and I think what they're going to find out with Breath of the Wild, at least what I hope they find out, because I, I really hope this game crosses like 10 million sales. I really want it to be the best selling game in the series, mm-hmm. uh, assuming that it, it's good enough to be. Obviously, I haven't played enough of it to know. Um, but assuming it is as good as I hope it is, uh, Breath of the Wild seems to be catering exactly to the audience that grew up with Zelda. And I think Breath of the Wild is going to end up becoming the new entry point for new gamers. Because I think people who have never played Zelda, but have played any of these other games, are going to look at Breath of the Wild and be like, i got to try that. Yeah. And I think it's going to end up being more for everyone than Nintendo thinks. And, and I think by Nintendo literally trying to design their game for the people who grew up with Zelda, um, it's going to end up being... Uh, it's going to end up doing exactly what they keep trying to do with the series, but always fail at. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, plus I really hope it sells well so Nintendo, like, <laughs> thinks this should be the way the series goes in the future. And, honestly, Twilight Princess sold really well and it didn't make any dang difference for the next game. No. Um, so, chances of Breath of the Wild actually making a difference in the future is probably slim to none. We'll see. Because <laughs> this is Nintendo. Yeah. You know, we're going to go back and get the Wind Waker 3, which I would love. But, I mean, it, it would feel like a step back after Breath of the Wild. Um, but Nintendo does what they want. And I guess that's part of Zelda's unique charm, you know, getting back to the original question. Like, there's not a lot of games like Zelda because Zelda is just weird, man. It, it lives <laughs> in this world that I don't think any other franchise but Mario ca- it, can survive. It lives in a world where it so ignores much. the world. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's like all of our fans really love this game, so let's give them the exact opposite. And they'll still buy it's it. Like, Oh, fans were excited by A Link Between Worlds? Well, this feels like a good time to throw out a level-based multiplayer game. Based like, on outfits. Yeah. The, yeah. It, I mean, and the thing is, I really love these games. But, like, I'm a weird gamer. I like <laughs> a lot of weird things. Um, a lot of... The, I recognize a lot of Zelda fans aren't really going to be cool with that. But for some reason, Nintendo thinks they will be. Um, and the, as the sales of Triforce Heroes show, they really weren't cool with it. Um... <clears throat> So I, I don't know. The Zelda is very unique, uh, but I, I, as I said, I do think there's tons of games that are like Zelda. I'd even argue the Witcher series is a lot like Zelda. Um, it just doesn't hide the fact it's an RPG. Clearly, an RPG. Um, Zelda kind of dances that line between action adventure and RPG, but like clearly tries to define itself as not being an RPG. Breath of the Wild might be changing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I, I guess you can argue genre-wise there's some difference, but to me, like, that's why I, I think I actually love the Witcher series so much because it feels like Zelda did. Um, except that there's things that, like, The Witcher and Dark Souls um, and, and all these other, you know, 
uh, Dark Siders. Like, there's one thing those games do that I've always wanted Zelda games to do. They just don't. And I like the continuity of those games. Um, and Zelda doesn't have that. Zelda's always been unique in that every game you could just play that. Mm-hmm. You don't need any other story. And you could do that with these other games, but like, you're rewarded for playing the three prior games. I don't know. It, it's. So, like, I want a Breath of the Wild 2, and I want it to build off of the end of Breath of the Wild. And it's never going to happen. You know, you could argue maybe we get a Majora's Mask style game, but did Majora's Mask really build off of Ocarina of Time? It, I mean, it, kind of, but not really. It really had nothing to do with Ocarina of Time. Um, so, yeah, it's. I, maybe I'm weird. I don't know. I know I'm weird. You are so weird, Nate. I, I'll stop talking now. All right. So, <clears throat> that's that's our fan topics. And now for the oh thing boy. that Nate thought he was going to be worried about, but he's really not going to be worried about. I'm still worried about. So, as we talked about earlier that I was going to begin and end with this, the Game Awards 2016 are coming around on Thursday. And that means that we're going to see a lot of games get awards and a lot of games get <laughs> not get awards. Um, sure. But... I wanted to take this time for the two of us. There's, you know, there's probably going to be more, but you know, there's just two of us now to to vote or to say you to vote on what we want to win. Um, because you know we like we, predictions. Yeah, we could do predictions. Um, and then we say like, well, I, you know, I predict that this will win, but I want this to win. Um, sure. Now I got to bring up the nominee list. <clears throat> dang it. No, I've, I'll, <laughs> I'll read it off. Well, I'm still going to bring it off because I'm going to forget. Okay. So. For game of the it's year, it's okay. They have a whole section on their site. Yeah. Right. For game of the year, we'll start from the bottom, from the top, work our way to the bottom. Um, sure. So the biggest with, award yeah, there is game of the year, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. You have Doom by id Software and Bethesda, Inside by Play Dead, Overwatch by Blizzard Entertainment, Titanfall 2 by Respawn and Electric Arts, and Uncharted 4: Thieves End by Naughty Dog and SIE Sony Interactive. Sony Interactive. Yeah. Interactive. yeah. yeah. So, out of those, I've played Doom, Inside, Overwatch, and Uncharted. I, you know, I don't really think Titanfall Two is gonna win. That's just me. Um, I liked Overwatch, or I like Overwatch. I constantly play the game. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily game of the year. Like, man, this this is a game that is pushed, like gaming forward I mean like it, it has in some ways like free DLC type <laughs> of stuff but like it's not something that I look forward to or like look at like this is the pinnacle we've reached the top um, mm-hmm. in terms of storytelling or in terms like it's got a great story if you watch the shorts read the comics. It, it doesn't feel as revolutionary as say World of Warcraft did in 2004. Yeah. I mean it's still it's still a really good game with really interesting characters and really fun play style it's just not like I mean it, it's a Blizzard game yeah it's, it's good like that's a shocker. Every game Blizzard releases is good. Um, and then in terms of Doom, I like that's just it's just a straight up adrenaline shooter. Um, I, well, that's what Doom is. Yeah, I know it's, <laughs> it's got a story. I don't know if I'd say that that's like, oh man, this is this is the best game that's come out this year. And here's the thing: like I've heard a lot of people talk about Inside, so I decided to give it a, a go for myself yesterday. Um, played the whole game through yep. in like two or three hours. Yep. I, I I'm probably gonna get hate for this. I didn't like it. Like I, I, it's okay. I didn't really. Not every game's for every person. I know. I, I just, I didn't think it was like, man, this is this is fantastic gameplay or fantastic storytelling. <laughs> like, I didn't really get it. Right. I mean, I know that I probably should, um, because like <laughs> I, I love abstract things and I love yep. abstract movies, um, and I love figuring them out. It's just I, I didn't get inside. Yep. Um, yep. And I don't know. Like, I disagree that it's a nomination for game of the year. My my vote is gonna go towards. Uh, towards uncharted 4 that game like i felt something break in me as i realized that this was like the ending of the the series like uncharted mm-hmm. 3 was great and i was like okay th- i'm fine with this being the last game but after the ending to uncharted 4 like the conclusion like the final conclusion i was like this is like the perfect ending to the perfect series of video games and i think that that game that game deserves game of the year great fantastic acting storytelling um, graphics, gameplay, all of it, packaged and uncharted. Naughty Dog always does a good job. Uh, what do you think, Nate? 
Uh, there's a game I want, and then the game I think is going to take it. Yeah, I think Inside's going to take it, but I want Uncharted 4 to win. I don't think Inside has a shot. Really? Um, I know this is not one that's decided by fans. I, I don't believe any... Uh, I believe only the fans' choice ones are. Yeah, this is a jury selected. Yeah, this, yep. is, this is the jury selected one. So, so it does have a better chance than it normally would, because I think if it was just fans... It would take like a Reddit movement to, to make it <laughs> take over because it, it, it's I, I've played it I haven't beaten it I only played it for like an hour. Um, it's a I I'm the opposite of you I think it's fantastic, but at the same point it's also an indie game basically going up against AAA titles. Yeah, and in a game of the year award that would be fan based it would have no shot. Uh, but I also think that all, all these other games listed, um. I think the panel is going to lean heavily towards something like Uncharted 4. Yes. I think Uncharted 4 is going to end up getting the win because of the weight for it, uh, the culmination of what it means, uh, and the fact that it is like the de facto PlayStation 4 game. PlayStation 4 has not really, and, and I might get burned for this, PlayStation 4 has not really had a de facto game. Like, this is why you buy a PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne is probably the closest, and that's in a niche genre. We talked about this before. Yeah. Uncharted 4 is not really a niche genre. So um, Uncharted 4 feels like, you know, this is why you should buy a PlayStation 4. And everyone who's been buying a PlayStation 4 has been kind of waiting for like that game to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Microsoft keeps releasing all these exclusives, and PlayStation 4 is just kind of trickling out a game a year. You know, here, here's here's your MLB The Show. Yeah. Like, like they, they haven't really hit you with anything big, and then Uncharted 4 hits, and like, okay, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And now, you know, they're going to try to do that again with The Last Guardian. Um, we'll see if if that holds up. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I think it's going to win just based on the merit that it is literally the best PlayStation 4 game. Yes, it is. Um, So it's going to win, I think, just because of that. All of, Everyone on this panel is going to own a PlayStation 4 and has probably played Uncharted 4. Even even the Nintendo people, like like they have played this game. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think they all will have played Inside. Well, but here's the thing: I I think of it kind of like I do, and and it can go either way with this because Uncharted Four is like a mess. I consider it just like The Last of Us, like a masterpiece of storytelling. Like this is what sure, if I sure. want to show someone that games should be in the same ballpark as film, I'm going to show them a Naughty Dog game. I'm going to show them Last of Us or Uncharted Four, but. A lot of people, if they want to show that games are art, more so like that have sure. abstraction to them or something that's, you know, you look at it and you're like, you know, this this provokes thought. That would be Inside. Inside's sure. ending does that both ways. Sure. Um, and so that's... No, I, I totally get where you're coming from. I just don't think anyone in that panel is going to look at Inside and Uncharted 4 and pick Inside over Uncharted 4. I hope not. Like, I want Uncharted 4 to win. That's where my vote I, I don't want Uncharted 4 to win. You don't? So, so, so that's kind of where, I, where I'm sitting at. I don't think Uncharted 4 is going to win in a landslide. I don't even think it's going to be close. Now, obviously, we, are, we don't actually know what yeah. the final tally is. But I'm pretty dang sure Uncharted 4 is winning Game of the Year. In fact, I thought the moment the game released and was getting all these 9-plus reviews that it was a shoe in for Game of yeah. the Year. And nothing that came out since has really told me that it that, that opinion has really changed. Um but the game I want to get Game of the Year is actually Titanfall 2. And the reasoning isn't just because it, it, the game got it, it is totally overlooked. Because it well, is. It came out it, with it was like rele- Battlefield. It, it, was released, it was released at a bad yeah. time. Um, but that game to me, and, and I'm not like a huge first person fan, so maybe I'm totally off base on this because people who are bigger first person shooter fans might have something different to say. That game to me is the pinnacle of what first-person shooters should be, both single-player and multiplayer. Um, that campaign in Titanfall 2 might be the best FPS campaign I've played in my entire life. It is that good. It beats out GoldenEye. It beats out all these other campa- great campaigns, the original Modern Warfare, uh, some of the older Call of Duty games, you know, where you're in World War II, uh, even Battlefield 1 you know, campaign. Like mm-hmm. Titanfall 2 is the best campaign I've ever, I've ever played. It, it is just an amazing... You could literally buy Titanfall 2 just to play the campaign. That's how good it is. Uh, and then it, it absolutely nailed everything it needed to in multiplayer. It took what the original Titanfall did and improved upon it in ways that made sense. Improved the mechanics, improved the weaponry, improved the the uh, Titan battles. Because the original Titanfall two, the original Titanfall was good. Um, I don't know that it was fantastic. That it was like you know this big revolutionary step, like it was bring, brought up, but it was it was good. Titanfall two reminds me what made Call of Duty popular in the first place. Yeah. 
is they absolutely nailed the campaign and they nailed the multiplayer and they've kind of just been living off of that that one instance with Modern Warfare that they did that ever since. All all of, all of Call of Duty, Duty's today's popularity has been built off of the original Modern Warfare. And Titanfall 2 feels like it just did it again. Mm-hmm. And no one's going to notice it because they released it at a terrible point. They basically point. sent it out to die, which is really sad. Yeah. And, and even the people behind the game are, like, mad. Like, we didn't choose for it to release them. Yeah. Like, they, that was, that EA's was EA. like, we got to like, release it at the holiday season. It's like, that's fine. Wait till December. Like, why? You're releasing it at a point where it's competing against names that are bigger. It's competing against a name that EA owns that's bigger than I that. know. That, that was a really weird decision on EA's part. Um, I, I think they could have got away with it if it would have remained an Xbox exclusive because then Microsoft would have got behind the campaign for it. Yeah. Um, and really pushed it hard. Like, Sony pushed Uncharted 4 hard, while Microsoft, back back in the day, was pushing Titanfall really yeah. hard. And they would have pushed Titanfall 2 just as hard if it was still exclusive. But because it was multi-platform, it meant that Respawn EA had to do its own advertising, didn't, and it got completely overshadowed by Battlefield 1, which, yes, Battlefield 1 is absolutely fantastic. But you'll notice Battlefield 1 is not up for an award in, in terms of Game gaming. Of the year. <clears throat> so, clearly... The panel that, that picked all these thinks Titanfall 2 is better than Battlefield 1 in the first place. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't be... Like, it is the... You know, yeah, there's... Overwatch is kind of an FPS game, but that's like a team thing. Um, you know, Uncharted 4 ha- has some FPS, but it's kind of third-person, kind of an action-adventure. Uh, Titanfall 2 is the representative for FPS. And that's saying something. It means that they think it's already better than Call of Duty and already better than Battlefield 1. And Battlefield 1 is fantastic. I don't know if you've had a chance to play it. Not yet. It is probably is it might be the best battlefield game. I've heard that. And for me for me to be like Titanfall 2 is it's just that much better than it. it it's insane to me cuz I didn't really even like the idea of Titans in the original Titanfall. Now I love it. <clears throat> it, it. It is so what what they did in Titanfall 2 is so amazing. But the thing is no one's going to no one's played it. It's probably not going to get the recognition it deserves even though I'm sure everyone on the panel has played it cuz again these were selected by the panel. So I'm sure the panel has played Doom, Inside, Overwatch, and Titanfall 2 and Uncharted 4, or at least a majority of the panel. But Titanfall 2 is just not going to get See, we say that, it's gonna... and, and this is probably where we're going to have to end it because we're going to have to move on to the next one. Um, sure, But sure. even though we look at things that are like, well, obviously this game hasn't been played a lot, but it's not, so it's not going to win an award, her story won Best Narrative and Best Performance last year. Um, and I sure. never played that game. I didn't hear sure. about it. I heard about it like right up until the Game Awards, and hadn't heard about it before then. So well, yeah, I think, and I think the panel is like a whole bunch of media yeah. members. Well, um, I, I remember seeing a giant list of it earlier because I know uh, Greg from Kind of Funny Games. I know we just brought them up earlier. Hey, I know he's on the yeah. panel. Um, and so it's it's a bunch of people that really care about video games. A bunch of people that really know what sure. they're talking about. Sure. Um, and again, I think Uncharted Four is still going to win because all of those people gave Uncharted Four like the top review score of the year. Yeah. Um, and so like I I. I Personally, I hope it wins. Um, obviously, Nate hopes. I really don't wins. want it to. I know. Um, but <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'm a little biased. I've I've never played an Uncharted game, and what upsets me about the fact that I haven't played an Uncharted game is I love Indiana Jones, and I haven't played Uncharted, and I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Uncharted. Is it feels like the perfect series I've been waiting for my oh, whole life, and I just fantastic ha- haven't played it. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll, I will someday, and I'll probably end up agreeing with you. Mm-hmm. That Uncharted Four maybe should should win because I, like I I've played a demo of it and I've seen other people play it and I've seen some gameplay of it but like I don't un, the impact isn't felt on me yeah because I haven't played the prior games and I think if anything's working against Uncharted Four to win it's that it doesn't really stand well on its own you have to have played yeah. the other games to get the full impact um, whereas Titanfall Two you could might as well just skip the first Titanfall. Overwatch is is a first game and it might be a series or it might just be a constantly evolving game, gonna, like World yeah. of Warcraft is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Doom is part, you know kind of a, a reboot of an established series. Um, so if anything's working against Uncharted Four, it's that you kind of have to yeah. play the prior games. But I still think I I don't even think it's gonna be close. Yeah. So, anyways, next next best one. studio and game direction recognizing a game studio for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. So we have Blizzard for Overwatch. Dice for Battlefield One, Id Software for Doom, Naughty Dog for Uncharted Four, Thief's End, and Respawn for Titanfall Two. Yeah, this one's kind of difficult. Um, I don't feel like it is, I, but like you for me to pick, um, not to call. <laughs> I I actually want Blizzard to win this one because they hit it out of the park with Overwatch. Like, I 
I'm not like I'm a, a first person shooter guy in like the sense that I'll play like Borderlands and stuff. I'm not like hardcore Call of Duty or other things like that. Um, sure. So Blizzard for me is like, or Overwatch for me is like, wow, this this game really like, you know, interests me. <laughs> it, it keeps me coming back regularly. Um, and so sure. I'm, I want, I, I kind of want Blizzard to win uh, Best Studio Game Direction. I feel like Naughty Dog's going to pull it off again. Um, so here's um, here's where I differ on you. I don't think Naughty Dog's going to pull it off because they've. this is an ongoing series that Uncharted 4 is just a natural progression from 1 has, to 8. Has Uncharted 3 won? Let me go check on that. You, you keep talking. I, I, I can't remember. Um, I don't think, even though I think Titanfall 2 is fantastic, again, it's another game that's just improving upon something that's done. So I don't think it's going to win. I think I think Uncharted 4 and, and Respawn is going to be pretty much like disqualified um, from the game direction aspect just because they're just doing what they used yeah. to do and doing it better. Um, you know, id Software is going to get some credit for Doom, but again, Doom feels like Doom. It doesn't feel revolutionary. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like... You know, they, it, it's good they did Doom right because they could have went way wrong well, with it. You're thinking DICE, aren't you? What? Are you thinking DICE for who's going to win? Yes. Yeah. Because Battlefield... And the reason I'm thinking DICE is because, like, Blizzard, I, I think, n- absolutely nailed what they were doing, but think about all the similar type games that came yeah. out like that this year. Um, Blizzard ended up having the most popular of them all, but it's not like the other ones were so terrible. Yeah. Um, and now there's like that Paladin game coming out that's like um, everyone's saying in beta is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, like it feels like uh, uh, Overwatch was a game that came out during a time when a whole bunch of these kind of games were coming out, and it just happened to be the most popular one. Yeah. There's people who don't even think it's the best one. But it's Blizzard, who already has like a pre-established 10-plus million audience mm-hmm. that scoops up everything they release. So it naturally became more popular. And DICE, and DICE really hit it like, I bought it. I bought it because you played it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was, I wasn't going to pick it up, and I love Blizzard games. Um, but DICE, because Battlefield was on was like a sinking ship, mm-hmm. right? It tried to do the Call of Duty thing. Well, it tried to do that, that police thing. The hard line? Yeah, it, that, that pulled that, that hard line, that last one they did. Like The game before that, they tried to be Call of Duty. The game after that, they tried to be like this unique, oh, we're going to do this whole cops, robbers thing. And that just, it, it just tanked. <laughs> um, it felt like Battlefield was dead in the water. Um, you know, Maybe they would just revert back to being like Battlefield 4 was or something, or Battlefield 3. But they, they weren't really going to revolutionize things. Then they had the balls to say, we're going to World War One, <laughs> An era that games avoid because of how gruesome that era is like people think like the nazis and stuff were nasty go look up like history behind world war one the combat everything in it is so brutal um and they had the balls to go to it and not only do it go to it but do it well yeah. um like they represent that era fantastically well obviously there's things that aren't necessarily true like like historical accuracy, like yeah, this one weapon existed back then, but it wasn't like you saw twenty people on a battlefield <laughs> running around with it. You know, it was like one person. Um, you know, so there, there's some you know, it's a video game thing going on, uh, but it, it really represents um, the brutality of that world and presents it in a way that doesn't necessarily make the player feel uncomfortable, but does make them realize that man, like death is like this is a serious thing, man, mm-hmm. like. Like, I didn't do it, but I just saw this guy's head get, you know, decapitated by a mortar. Like, like there's all this crazy stuff Plus, going on. every death, um, you get that, that title screen where it's like, this person from here to here. This yeah, you're, you're like a character in the in the war. Yeah. And, like, you, you don't respawn as yourself. You're a completely new character. Like, it's crazy how they did yeah. that. Um, and, and I think just in terms of the direction and how well they executed it and just how different it is from prior Battlefield games while maintaining, like, that high-quality, like, vehicle combat and all the stuff that, that Battlefield players expect, I think that's going to end up winning, like, Best Studio in Game Direction. I, I, in fact, I think this might be the only award that Battlefield wins. I could see wins. that. But Overwatch, I think, is going to be right there because it's, like, the best of, like, a new... Not really a new a new genre, but, like, a new popular a, a genre. A of a of an old genre. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think... I think DICE, the, if they're going to win an award, this is going to be the okay. one. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. Got Firewatch by Campo Santo, Inside by Playdead, Mafia 3 by Hangar 13. I can't, believe, Ma- I can't believe Mafia 3 isn't Neither can I. Oxenfree by Night School Studio, 
and Uncharted 4 A Thief's End by Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. I, so this is either going to be a clean sweep for Naughty Dog here. Or... And they're going to pull it off. Or Firewatch. For, 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 for ending, or it's going to be Firewatch. I say, the reason why I don't know if it's going to be Uncharted 4 is because of what you said. Is that the story isn't just Uncharted 4. The story no, is... Yeah. But, but two, also, three. it's also... That they culminated an yeah. already great story and, in a really good way. Like you said, uh, like I could see Uncharted Four sweeping this because the story in the game was fantastic. The way it was told, yeah. like how uh, there's there's a plot point that I really can't say because it's. I just it. I, I, I'm still laughing at Mafia Three. I know. And let me like I love the Mafia series. Like I know a lot of people didn't like Mafia Two. I loved it. I played Mafia Three. I don't get what's so great about the story. I mean, it's okay, but it just feels like a. It happened. Yeah, but <laughs> I I wonder if it was included just because they wanted to get Mafia in a category. <laughs> but Firewatch is a is a solely story driven game. Yeah, I haven't it is, played yeah. it. I've heard really good things about it, and I've been wanting to play it. Um, yeah, well, I haven't played it for very long. It's so like when I say not very long, I got like twenty minutes. Yeah, so it's not like I, I'm a very good assessment of how it good is, it is. But I've seen people based play on it, the videos I've seen, like like this is if. We're going to be solely on story, and we're talking self-contained. Then it's going to be either Firewatch Inside or Oxen Free. Yeah, I can see Oxen Free. Um, I I haven't played any of Oxen Free, so I I don't know um, what that game is, is about. But again, th- this this is the kind of category that to me always felt like a favorite indie titles. Yeah, because one thing indie titles can do that AAA titles don't always focus on is tell an amazing narrative. Because indie titles aren't necessarily always focused on the visuals or having all these effects or even gameplay. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like you said, her story won, won some stuff last year that, you know, okay, it doesn't even feel like a game. Yeah. But but mm-hmm. it's a very good story. So uh, I think that Mafia 3 has got no shot. And Uncharted 4 just has, has a shot because of how well they, they ended things. But to me, this is an indie category all the way. So who do you, and Fire Firewatch and Inside are are the are the two more popular of the three on there. Who do you vote for then? Um, I think I think Uncharted Four is going to end up winning. I want Firewatch. I want to Firewatch to win. to win too. I I can see um, it going both ways, so I don't know who I'd predict. Winning. Like all I ever hear people talk about with Uncharted Four story. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, okay, like when I hear like P.S. I love you and Greg Miller who's on the panel. Talk about Uncharted Four. He doesn't talk about the gameplay. He talks about the story. Yeah. So it's like that story clearly resonated. Um, I'm just hoping that some of these indie games resonated a bit more, like Firewatch. Yeah. So next, best art direction for outstanding creative and technical achievement in artistic design and animation. You have Abzu by Giant Squid and Five Hundred Five, Firewatch by Campo Santo, Inside by Playdead, Overwatch by Blizzard, and Uncharted Four: A Thief's End by Naughty Dog. Uh, this is where I think Inside gets a win. I. And it's not because I personally like it. Um, I mean, I don't think it's terrible. No. But, um, you know, I, I'm looking at other games like Abzu. It looks like other indie games I've played. Mm-hmm. It just does. It, it looks like a Unity game. Uh, Firewatch looks like other games I've played. Overwatch looks like a Blizzard game. <laughs> I mean, it, it just does. It, it was literally built off another MMO yeah. they were making. No, so, no. like, it looks like a... It, it's, it looks like a Blizzard game supposed to look. Uncharted 4 looks like Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, yeah, that's, it's the best looking yeah, Uncharted. I was say, I'm like, they, they all kind of look like, different. Like, yeah, well, I mean, it is literally the best looking, but, but like, do I give them a technical achievement for making the best looking <laughs> Uncharted game on their most powerful platform? Like, how's that a technical achievement? If it wasn't the best looking game on their most powerful platform, then something's wrong at Naughty Dog because they created The Last of Us on the PlayStation 3. Yeah. Um, so like you expect them like it's almost I can't give them outstanding creative with it because this is what you expect yeah. out of Naughty Dog um, and it's not really artistic design because it's a continuation of what they've done with like mm-hmm. The Last of Us and stuff like that um, but like yeah I mean the animation's obviously top notch I, I think Inside will end up winning because one I think Inside is a media darling yeah media loves this game um, and two, one thing I always hear media talk about it is they just love the visual presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I think this is the game. Like Firewatch, if that wins story, uh, Uncharted Four ends up winning Game of the Year. I could see Inside them being like, "This is the one we got to give." to Well, Inside. you look at you look at Inside, and you think this is what an Orwellian like yeah. uh, hellscape would look like. 
And yep. they did a very good job of that. Like, I'll give them that. Like, I didn't really like yep. the story and the gameplay was... Well, I mean, that's what we're talking about. I mean, it's yeah. literally just art, art direction. That's what and we're so talking about. so I can about. see this going either to Firewatch because it's a beautiful game. Uh, it is, but it doesn't yeah. look like something I or, haven't seen before. Or Inside. Like, I don't necessarily think, like, Overwatch is going to get best best looking art direction because yeah it's it's detailed but it's like sure. it's you know it it's it's overwatch it's see the, the only reason i don't think firewatch is going to get it is because every time i see screenshots of firewatch i can't tell it's firewatch it looks like a zillion other games mm-hmm. um so like you know it, it's just like with abzu like yeah it looks fantastic but how many unity games have i seen with <laughs> a similar art direction like so mm-hmm. many um, it's still a beautiful game, and this art direction is absolutely gorgeous. So is Firewatch, but it's like it, it doesn't feel unique. Um, inside, I'm not going to say it feels necessarily unique either. Um, there are other games I think that have been like this. I just think there's been less, yeah. and not as many that have been highly praised like this one. Okay. Um, so we're so yeah. I think I think Inside's getting that one. You think Firewatch? No, I think either Inside or Firewatch. But my vote is still for Inside on this one. Kind of like yours. Okay. Oh, I, I converted you. No, okay. uh, my. My vote was either way, um, I, but I played Inside, and I like I. That's the one thing I can give that game is that I really like the art design, and then the this next one's gonna be fun. Best music and sound design. I hate that they mix these together. Um, yeah, I know. Like, well, but one's a great, it is what it is. One's a great soundtrack. One's like, well, this is a cool sound effect. Um, for outstanding audio, yeah. inclusive of score, original song, licensed soundtrack, and sound design, we've got Battlefield One by Dice and EA, Doom by yep. Software and Bethesda, Inside by Play Dead. Res Infinite by Enhanced Games, which is a, a yep. trip if you've ever played, um, and yes. Thumper by Drool, which is a I think it's a VR game. Um, yes. So, huh. I mean, we're just on sound design. So, like, I think Thumper, like, it's it's not very long, and I don't think it's very good. <laughs> but we're just talking about sound. Mm-hmm. Um, it has very good sound design. But the thing is, all these games do. Yeah. Um. I still think it's gonna go to Battlefield One. Yeah, I feel like this is where another one's because like, um, like they they nail like it's not just the sound effects um, alone because this includes sound mm-hmm. effects. Uh, absolutely stunning. You feel like you're back. You're you're back in World War One. Yeah. It does. None of these sounds sound like modern weapons. These are old school weapons that jam up all the time. They suck. You're beating someone with an axe. It feels and sounds like you chopping someone in the head with an axe like the the sound direction in it is is absolutely stunning and and they kind of the music they mix in with it like it all feels very period Mm -hmm. um you know if battlefield one doesn't win anything else it should win no i my my vote and prediction is for battlefield one on this because it's like and poor doom i feel bad for doom it like doom is a good game it's good but that's the thing it's just good. I can't think of anything in particular on it that's outstanding. Yeah. Um, but because that's kind of the way Doom has always been. It's just a good game. Mm. Um, I, I never even the old Doom. Like I'm like, oh, everyone loves Doom. I'm like, yeah, everyone thinks it's a good game. It doesn't necessarily mean they think it's outstanding yeah. um, in any particular regard. And that's kind of the way I feel about the new game. I'm glad id Software and Bethesda did like a great job with mm-hmm. it. But it's it is a good game. It's it's yeah. just not like like it's good. It's just I like I don't think it's good enough. To beat all the other, so options. we're in agreement there that Battlefield One gets everything <laughs> for <Yeah>. that one. <laughs> so, so that's two two awards. I think I picked Battlefield One for best performance award to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capturing. We have Alex Hernandez as Lincoln Clay in Mafia Three, uh, oh. Sissy Jones as Delilah in Firewatch, Emily Rose as Elena in Uncharted Four, Nolan North as Nathan Drake in Uncharted Four. It's basically going to Uncharted Four. Rich Summer. As Can we just Henry, agree on that? Troy Baker. I I hope it's Nolan North. Well, it, okay. They're basically this is the Uncharted Four award, and I'm not saying that because like I, I'm I, I haven't played the Uncharted games, but like when three of the nominees are from one game, let's be real. Someone from that game is winning it. Well, again, that's. I mean, you could argue it's going to end splitting the votes. But like, people are going to vote for Troy Baker. People are going to vote for Nolan, Nolan North. Like, Troy Baker is the most well-known name. Uh, people are going to vote for Nolan North because that's the protagonist. People are going to vote for Emily Rose because she... I, I've seen cutscenes. She does See, an awesome you, job. You say that and you say, well, yeah, these are people that people know, that they recognize their voice. But uh, Viva Seyfert won her story, Best Performance, last year. And sure. she went up against people like Camilla Ludington for Warcraft. Um, she went against yeah. Mark Hamill as the Joker and won. So 
Okay, so he like the, uh, that's not a big deal. Mark Hamill didn't do that great of a job. He, as the he's Joker. the best. He's the best Joker in my opinion. Still, he, he might he might be the best Joker <clears throat> in your opinion, but in terms of when I when, I don't know. I mean, we can go on a debate yeah. forever. Like, I don't think he was a bad Joker. I just don't think like comparatively to what what else he was competing against. It wasn't like a performance that I, I think back on like oh man, yeah, remember Mark Hamill as the Joker? No, I know, but I mean like, like that's that's still like. An iconic role played by an iconic person. Like iconic and person, so I know. It, that's that's what I'm saying. So it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be like you look yeah. at Nolan North playing. I think Nathan Drake. I I don't think uh, the Mafia Three one has a shot. No, and, no. and I'm not I'm not saying that because Mafia Three is like a bad game. I know it didn't review very well. And I I think that uh, you know the voice actor for uh, Lincoln was very very good. Mm-hmm. Like I have nothing against him. Um, I just don't think like if you look at the history of the game awards and who wins this it's going to be someone who not only did a fantastic job but was in a in what the panel considers to be one of the best games yeah um mafia 3 is not going to be it's not even up for one of the best games yeah um you know firewatch has been in you know multiple awards already uncharted 4 has basically been in every single category i think i think it might have been in every category uh oh it wasn't in sound design no. sound design was in. <clears throat> but it was in every other category um, so clearly there's a bias this year towards Uncharted 4. If there's no signal to me that Uncharted 4 is going to win a game of the year, it's the fact that it's in, like, every category. Yeah. I, um, I can see... I. It's going to be... Some, like, the thing is, there's two from Firewatch, three from Uncharted, and then there's, you know, Lincoln. You know, Alexander <laughs> Hernandez. And to me, it's like, oh, Alexander Hernandez is going to win because he's the only, like, single one from a single game. But it's between Firewatch and Uncharted. Yeah. It's tough for me... I, I think Nolan North is going to end up taking it because it's his last run as as uh, yeah Nathan. like just because this is the last game and it's such a memorable character mm-hmm. um, you know yeah Troy Baker did a fantastic job as he always does um, Emily Rose did a fantastic fantastic job uh, and and Sissy Jones and you know, Rich Summer they did awesome jobs too mm-hmm. um, it's just man well like I, when you think voice acting I don't know. and the king of voice acting you think Nolan North he's been in the most stuff he's done the most stuff yeah. and, and he's got Yeah I, I always think it, uh, when I think king of voice acting I always think it's either Nolan North or Troy Baker yeah. or someone in the like those are guys that do like amazing job every time out you know you're going to get something good And and so like I I I'm I think that it's going to be Nolan North and I vote Nolan North um just cuz he did a great job as 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 Drake, like he always does, but like yeah. Here's my thing: I want it to be Nolan North. I'm okay if it's Troy Baker. Yeah, um, I'm o- I'm okay if it's any of the ones from Uncharted Four because I will give Uncharted Four massive credit on their voice acting. Um, but part of me says if Firewatch hasn't won anything yet to this point, then I want Fire someone from Firewatch to win. Like if it didn't win Best Story, then I want it to win the voice. Or acting. Uh, uh, like that's just a, that's just like a desire for Firewatch to get something. Yeah. I don't, like, as awesome as Uncharted 4, I am afraid that Uncharted 4 is going to end up just sweeping. And it's going to be the most boring award show ever. See, I don't know, because the people that vote are a lot like you and me, in terms of, like, well, we've already given this award, this, like, game, a bunch of different rewards. Yeah, but it's also one of those, like, if they actually think Uncharted 4 is just the best, that's just the yeah. way it is. But this isn't like the Oscars, where they've never played the games before, never watched the movies, and they're just like, this well, sounds and, and, Well, they, yeah, but they might also think, well, there's awards that don't, like, the next award does not have Uncharted. Yeah. So, speaking of, next award. Yep. Games for Impact Award for a thought. I'm supposed to say thought. It says, though, provoking game <laughs> with a profound pro-social meaning or message. 1979 Revolution by Ink Stories. Blockhood by Plethora Project and Devolver Digital. Orwell by Osmotic Studios. Surprise Attack. Sea Hero mm. Quest by Glitchers. And That Dragon Cancer by Numinous yeah, Games. Yeah, this is like an indie game category for... Um, Profound, you know, pro social media. I think I think stuff. that Dragon Cancer is going to win because it's had the most impact out of all of these. Like I've seen. I think you're right, be- only because I've never played any of these games. Well, like yeah, like you. The, the only one that, <laughs> I think the only one you've heard of, right, is that Dragon Cancer. Um, I've heard, yeah, I've, heard, I've seen some people on NeoGaf talk about it. And that, that's it. I haven't heard it talked about like anything. That else. Dragon Cancer got media coverage. It was on the news. Um, it was. Well, I don't. I don't watch. The I news. know, but it was on the news. It got shown <laughs> off. Like, man, this guy, his his son was going through cancer, and so sure. he made this game to deal with it. And like, it it yeah. it like reached out. I think some it, of the proceeds went to cancer yeah. organizations. So I think that Dragon Cancer is going to win. Or well, I played a little bit of very interesting game. Um, sure. I it's it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's it's based off of like 1984, like Big Brother type of thing, um, and. It's interesting. 
Um, it mm-hmm. it's a lot like playing like Papers Please or Her Story, and the fact that like the gameplay of it's not really like gameplay. It's more sure. of a I don't know I don't know how to say it. You you have to play it for yourself. There's a demo on Steam. Yeah. Um, yep. But I can still see. I still think that that Dragon Cancer was going to win just because of its popularity and just because of of what it's done. Sure. I'll go with whatever you say because I haven't played these games. So. Okay. Here's your other the category you said this was best independent game for outstanding. No, yeah, no, no. I was saying like all the games for Impact Wars are indie, indie games. games so. For outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system, Firewatch. So this feels almost like a biased category, by the way. Why? Because if Inside didn't win Game of Year, it's going to win any Game of the Year. I hope not. Um, but but that's what's going to happen. If this panel nominated Inside as Game of the Year yeah. and it doesn't win Game of the Year, it's obviously winning any Game of the Year. You don't get nominated for a Game of the Year as the only indie game and then not win the indie yeah. game category. So we got. So I'm just saying, unless and it's weird too because if Inside wins Game of the Year, how can it not be the best indie game? Yeah. Well, if- so it almost feels like this is the Inside Award. Ahead of time, I'm just throwing that out. We've there. got Firewatch by Campo Santo, Hyper Light Drifter yep. by Heart Machine, Inside by Play Dead, Stardew Valley by Concerned Ape and Chucklefish Games, and The Witness by Thelka Inc. Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of people forgot that game even came out this year. The Witness. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I know I just got Stardew Valley. I haven't played it. I know that a lot of sure. people really, really liked it. It was like an instant yep. hit. I don't know if yep. it's going to win Independent Game of the Year because it's. I don't think it's it not really anything we haven't seen before. Um, Hyperlight Drifter is a beautiful game. Love it. Absolutely love that game. Love that game. That's where my vote would go, is Hyperlight Drifter. I don't think it's going to win. I don't think it's going to... Like you said, I don't think it's going to stand a chance against Inside. I think Inside's going to sweep that easily. Yeah, I, I don't... Like, here's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm looking at the panel, because the panel helped pick the games in the first yeah. place, right? And it's like... Inside was nominated for Game of the Year, and it's also nominated for Best Indie Game. How can it not win Best Indie Game when they already thought it was the Best Indie Game? Yeah. Like, it, it just... that That's what's weird. Like, I, I feel like this category would have been better almost if Inside wasn't nominated for Game of the Year. Yeah. Uh, because then you don't really know. Because Inside and Firewatch have both been nominated for, like, a lot of awards. Mm-hmm. So you would figure it's between Firewatch and Inside. Um, in terms of just popularity, like, oh my god, they're talking about Firewatch for best story and best voice acting, and Inside for best story, and, you know, best overall game, yeah. and, you know, best visuals. Um, these other games haven't been even mentioned until just now. Um, I feel like there's going to be part of the the base that's going to say, especially if Inside ends up winning Game of the Year, that's going to say, well, maybe we shouldn't give Inside best any game, uh, because the only reason they voted for Inside is because, like, Firewatch or, like, The Witness was not up there yeah to vote for like it might be like oh we originally voted for these games to be part of game of the year but you know this one ended up winning and if a couple of people who voted for inside are like oh we don't want to vote for it again um you could end up seeing like a firewatch take it uh, which is probably the most likely other candidate or yeah. the witness because the witness had a lot of hype going into it <clears throat> and it mostly delivered on its promise um like it's that one indie game that was made by uh you know a well-established indie developer who already had a hit success mm-hmm. Um, and The Witness delivered exactly what it said it was going to deliver on. It, it wasn't like, you know, No Man's Sky, which <laughs> notice how that's not up for any awards. Um, you know, it wasn't like No Man's Sky where they overpromised. Like, he said exactly what the game is going to be, and that's what it was. Um, you know, it, so, you know, I'd like to see there might be some, some votes for The Witness just because, but so I... So who do you vote for then? We know Inside's probably... I, I personally want Firewatch to take it. Okay. But... I think this is Inside's award to lose. Like, something weird would have to happen where the panel just suddenly hates Inside. Okay. Um, yeah. Here's here's another sad combination. Uh, mo- best mobile or handheld game. For the best game playable... Uh, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally okay with that. For the best yes. game playable on portable devices, including mobile phones and dedicated gaming handhelds. So yep. you've got Clash Royale by Supercell, Fire Emblem Fates by Intelligent Systems and Nintendo, Monster Hunter Generations by Capcom... Pokemon Go by Niantic and Severed by Drinkbox Studio. So, I want Fire Emblem Fates to win just because I love Fire Emblem. I love the Fates games. Yep. I know Pokemon Go is going to win. No. See, you say that, but no. I'm, I'm thinking of a game that's been played. It, it's, it was the top game that's ever been on the App Store. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it is also the, one of the worst reviewed Pokemon games by media. Well, yeah, because it's not a Pokemon game. 
But that, but, but you, you're missing my point. Media don't actually think this game is good, and media are the people voting. Well, but if you look at media, media are the people that recognized this game was promised to have all these features, and it doesn't have them. Media are the ones that dealt with the servers not being up. Media are the ones that realize there's nothing to do in this game after you catch Pokemon. Like they like Pokemon Go was a massive success, but media did not like that game. The, they were very the, critical of it. Like, gaming media like IGN and Kotaku. And but that, these are the people voting I know, on you've got, it. Like, have, have Entertainment you it? Weekly like, in there. You've got you know other like non gaming media in there, and they're they're in like they're, they look at this and they're like, what the heck is Monster Hunter? What the heck is Severed? Pokemon Go. We know what that is. Yeah, but the people included on the panel are people that pay attention to video games at those outlets. Yeah. Like, Pokemon Go on Metacritic has a 68. It's still not the worst-reviewed game on Metacritic. What? It's still not the worst-reviewed me- game on Metacritic. Um, It's the, probably the worst-reviewed of all the games on the list. Oh, well, this list, maybe yes. maybe Maybe Clash Royale might be low. Well, and that's the thing. Like, what are they basing... What, no, Clash Royale's an 86, dude. What are they viewing... What are they, like... Are they saying best overall game? On this, are they going to be look like? Well, Pokemon Go was played the most. It had the most, like the biggest user base out of all these. Well, it says best mobile handheld game. It, that's what this category is. It is the best of the mobile games. So then, if if that's what we're going off of, instead of like, well, this is the most popular. This got the most widespread acclaim. Again, if this was like a fan vote. Pokemon Go. Would no, be. I know. But if if this is, a, I think this is a panel, right? Yeah. I just made this, this is confirm. the judges. So yeah, then, panel. so then, panel. I'd say severed wins. I'd say Fire Emblem Fates is it's my vote, but Sever is probably going to end up winning because that game. I am going to go. Let me let me see here. I'm going to base this on review scores. Since <clears throat> Sever got an 89, yeah, um, on iOS only 82 on Vita, 82 on Wii U, mm-hmm. but it's in the 80s. Um, Clash Royale got a solid 86, uh, which Clash Royale is actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I know you you haven't played this <laughs> on your kind of thing. Um, but but it actually is pretty good. Like it, it it's a legit good mobile game. Um, believe it or not, those exist. <laughs> uh, um, let me see what what Fates got here. Uh, Fates is currently the highest rated of all the games on there by the media. Um, well, let me check Monster Hunter. I I, I I can't discount Monster Hunter. I I don't think enough of them will. Yeah, Monster Hunter's also got like an eighty. Five. Yeah, but that so can't... they're all pretty highly rated games. Pokemon Go is literally the worst rated game, and it's probably only included because of its popularity. Well, and Monster Hunter Generations came out very recently. The only thing, the only way Pokemon Go I think has a shot is if they just say it proved like that uh, augmented reality is like a thing, yeah, and people should explore more of it. Um, but again, that doesn't make it the best. It just means that like it proved that this could be something that could be good if someone did mm-hmm. it right. Um, and, and granted, Pokemon Go, if that December update rumor is true, might finally be getting it right. Um, but again, you know, this many months after launch, and that update's not going to be out by Thursday. Yeah. So it's not going. And these votes have probably already been cast. So Pokemon Go is the um, the No Man's Sky that somehow managed to get on this list. Kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, the the I think the big difference is if that December update is true. Like like No Man's Sky, you can kind of see where. Because it didn't include, like, anything of what it promised. <laughs> um, like, Pokemon Go at least included the main premise of you can go catch Pokemon out in the real yeah. world. Well, I mean, um, that was the main, the main premise. premise of No Man's Sky was you can explore an, an infinite galaxy. Yeah, but it was supposed to be, like, every planet is different. I mean, and they're, I mean they're, sli- they're different. They're slightly different. But they're not really. They, they start becoming really samey yeah. after a while. Um, especially since like every hut on each planet is like the same hut. Yeah, no, it's like ugh, I'm, I'm not it, defending it's, it's that bad. game by any yeah. means. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That like that like they, you know, there's a lot of things that they were wrong with it, but like, even the the supposed core of the game didn't even feel right. Um, it felt like it just was a bunch of BS. <laughs> um, so who do you think is gonna just win? like get to the center of the galaxy? It's gonna be amazing. It's not that so amazing. Who do you think is gonna win? Um, but yeah, so I think. You know, based on just pure reviews, pure just pure quality, pure appeal to media members, I think Fire Emblem Fates is going to take it. What do you vote for? I think, I, I think if they're going to pick a, a mobile game, it'll be Clash Royale. Um, I, I think Severed, you know, it has a good shot because it's on you know so many different devices. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like Clash Royale is really only on phones and, and tablets, whereas Severed is on you know even on the Vita. Um, in addition to like Wii U and, and all that stuff, so 
but but I think fate. I think this is like the one category where Nintendo's going to get a win. Yeah. Um, and it's going to go to it's going to go to fate because fate is absolutely fantastic, and it's the highest review game of all the games on the list. Mm-hmm. So, so is that what you vote for then? Yeah, it's what I want to win, and it's what I think is yeah. going to win. And I don't think Monster Hunter has a chance because Monster Hunter, I think, is just too niche for, for Western media. Yeah. And that's saying something um, because Fire Emblem Fates is very niche. It is, but it's very approachable no, to Western audience. Like, Monster Hunter is not that approachable to Western gamers. Very, Japanese gamers, sure. They love that mm-hmm. thing. Like, I wouldn't even call Monster Hunter niche in Japan. That's how popular it is. <laughs> but Fire Emblem Fates is like, it's popular here, but not popular in Japan. <laughs> So it's kind of like Zelda, yeah. actually. Zelda's not that popular in Japan anymore either. So best. Oh, this next one. Best VR game for the best game experience playable in virtual reality. Uh, so we've got Batman: Arkham VR by Rocksteady and Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment. Eve Valkyrie by CCP Games. Job Simulator by Al yeah. Alchemy Labs. Res Infinite yep. by Enhanced Games and Thumper by Drool. I think it's going to go to Batman. Because I say Batman because it's the most recognizable. Well, that name. and like and, and because it was good, like it was yeah. Good. Well, it was good and you demo. look at Batman. I mean, I call it a demo. It's not even really a game to me. Well, but it's like a twenty dollar, thirty dollar game, so it's not really like that lasts like a half yeah, hour. Okay. Like it's the way I mean, over. Right now, you're paying for experiences on VR. You're not paying for like yeah. That's the thing. I don't think there should even be a VR category. I mean, I think um, if they want to say like, if they want to say best VR experience, I think that would be a better way to, to name this category. But when you call something a game. I look at all of the these um, the these selected things, and they're, they're just demos. Yeah. None of these feel like a game. Like some of these cost like forty bucks, and um, no, <laughs> I wouldn't pay more than like a dollar on Steam to try some of these. Like it, I guess it's my problem with VR in general. There really isn't like a no, true I know. There's, game. There's no reason to get VR right it. now, in my opinion. Yeah, so, but, like, if they wanted to say VR experience because VR is, like, the hot thing, then I would say Batman because who doesn't want to be Batman? Well, and it's also, like, not that these games are unpolished, but um, Batman, Batman VR is is surprisingly... And it, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, all these demos, I'm going to call them demos, are good. Um, It's just Batman, I don't know. I bias. It's, well, I... It, it might it might end up being like Eve Valkyrie. I know that that's really good. Mm-hmm. Job Simulator. I know a lot of people had fun with. I mean, people are are raving about all of these these experiences. Yeah. But so like part of me, I think I have just a lot of bias to Batman because I love. Batman. Well, like I played the, I played the Batman Arkham VR and it was really really cool because it was like oh wow. yeah. But have you played all these other VR games? I played Job Simulator, okay. and I played Res Infinite not VR. Oh. So I can't really speak. For you didn't kind of get the ex- the experience. But Res Infinite yeah. is a full game. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, it it's is. It's just I, you know, for VR. I mean, I could see again. I just think it's going to go to Batman. Like there's these other games are yep. great, but I, I it's it's going to go to Batman. I agree with you on Batman. I have a feeling it's probably going to go to something that isn't Batman. But for now, I'll stick with Batman. I I don't know. I don't really like this category. So <laughs> best action game. Sorry, sorry, VR people. I mean, I, I think VR's got great potential. I think we're nowhere close to it being a viable thing in the market best action game for the best games in the action genre focused on combat battlefield one doom gears of war 4 by the coalition and microsoft studios overwatch and titanfall 2 let's kind of get this out of the way i don't necessarily think overwatch is an action game uh, and it's funny you say that oh, cause sorry. i think i think it's an action game i don't i didn't i saw action adventure and i was like i don't think it's an action adventure game no. it's not it's an action game no i i think i think this is the category overwatch yeah, wins no overwatch can win this um, you know, it's an action general focused on combat. That's exactly what that game is. Um, yeah, these other games are that too. Um, I think Doom has a nice shot at this one. I don't think Gears of War Four is really going to get there. Um, by the way, Gears of War Four is good. Yeah, it I mean, just came a, out another, sol- another solid game for for Microsoft. Um, you know, again, Titanfall Two, fantastic. I would love to see it get the award here. I, I just, I think that you know, another Overwatch has cropped up a few times. I think it's clear the panel wants Overwatch to win something. Uh-huh. Because Overwatch has, you know, it, 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 it's been a sensation. It, it has. Like, there's all these games that have come out like it, but Overwatch is the best of all of them. You see, like, t-shirts, you see pops, figures for it, like Hot Topic. And yeah, like, like, like it's, a, it's a big deal. And so is Battlefield 1. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Battlefield 1's probably at that same level. Titanfall 2, again, bad release, period. Gears of War 4, big deal for, for some, but it's a single-platform game. Yeah. Um, I mean, so is Overwatch, technically. But... Uh, I, I think that this is the award that they say Overwatch. You, I mean, you're all about that action, all about that combat. Well, considering there's no other part to the game, it's just action and combat. 
Yeah, like the other the other parts have a lot of narrative. <clears throat> Overwatch doesn't have that. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I guess Doom doesn't have that either. I don't know. So, anyways, Overwatch, Overwatch. Anyways, that that's Overwatch's category to lose. Okay. This next one is Breath of the Wild. Oh wait, best, I mean, best action adventure game. The best action adventure <laughs> games combine in combat with traversal and puzzle solving. So we got Dishonored Two by Arcane and Bethesda Softworks. Yep. Oh my, I love that game so much. Hitman, Dishonored by IO Interactive, and Square Enix. Hyperlight Drifter, which somehow I'm surprised it appeared here. Because it's a great game. Okay. It's a great game. Love it. I just didn't think it would appear up against with these other, like... Yeah, people. these other really yeah. big games. Ratchet and Clank by Insomniac Games and Sony Interactive. And then, of course, Uncharted 4. Yeah. Um, so, this is the only place Dishonored 2 appears. And I want it to win. I don't think it will. Hmm. I want it to win because it's a great game. It's reviewed great. Um, oh, yeah. Dishonored 2, I think, is better than the first game. Yeah. And I, I didn't well, think I was going to say that because I love I loved the original Dishonored mm-hmm. so much. But Dishonored 2 is like that and then some. It took whatever. Um, also, the cast, like, oh, my gosh. The fact that oh, Vincent D'Onfrio and they, Robin they, Lord Dishonored Taylor. 2 feels like it, it's the game on this list I want to win. Um, again, this is also one of those things that, like, if Uncharted 4 is up for Game of the Year, how could it not be the best game in its own category? Yeah. Just like Inside, it's kind of like, this almost feels like there's no point to have this because it's clearly Uncharted 4 yeah. that's going to win. But I would love to see Dishonored 2. Like, maybe they're just like, look, Dishonored 2 is really good. We have to give it something. Yeah. But, I mean, I again, any game that's Game of the Year that ends up going into a category about its own genre, if it can't win its own genre, then it shouldn't be yeah. you know, for Game of the Year to talk. So, so we're, we're in agreement. We want Dishonored 2. But, Uncharted but 4 it's probably going to be Uncharted 4. I don't know how it can't be Uncharted 4. Okay, best role-playing game. The best, this will be best fun. game designed for rich player character customization progression, both, both offline Two things are included on this online, list. Including massively multiplayer. So we've got Dark Souls 3. Actually, three things are included on this list that are really interesting. Dark Souls 3 from software and Bandai Namco Entertainment. So it's from, from software. Yep. De- Deus Ex, Mankind Divided by Eidos Montreal yep. Square Enix. And this is the weird one for me. Oh, Deus Ex is already No, weird. no, no, not that. Go on. The The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Blood and Wine by CD Projekt Red, because that's a DLC. Yep. Um, World of Warcraft Legion. It, it's like an expansion pack, yeah. just like World of Warcraft Which Legion. Which is an expansion pack. And then they're just tossing some cookies to Nintendo. Xenoblade Chronicles X by Monolith Soft and Nintendo. Great game. Does not stand a chance in this category. <laughs> I, I, I would like it to win, but as... Man, I love that game. But there's just if you if you compared that to Dark Souls three, in terms of how the game is, like the the character design, like the textures that aren't like the character textures in Xenoblade are just like holy crap Nintendo or Monolith Soft like you couldn't have put in the extra work, maybe make the mouths move with the words, make characters emote, like these are basic things. Here's the thing, I know that this feels really weird, right? Um, like this whole category feels weird because you, you got Dark Souls 3 and Xenoblade Chronicles which are clearly like new games this year yeah Um, you have an expansion pack for World of Warcraft granted World of Warcraft expansion packs almost feel like a new release of a game mm-hmm. and Legion is absolutely fantastic it might be the best expansion pack since the Burning Crusade but uh, so far that's the thing like it's weird it feels weird for Legion to, to win this because you you don't really get a full picture for what Legion is until we're already talking about the next X pack because mm-hmm. that's when they stop adding content to it. Um, so like I guess it, it's really hard to tell right now. I don't think Legion has a chance just because it, it it's just the type of game World of Warcraft is the ever evolving game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think as fantastic as as this X pack has been so far. I don't think it has a chance. Um, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided isn't that uh, more of like a remake? No, it's like a third. It's the third in a series of games. Okay. Um, because okay, before that, is, okay. oh, what was it? Human Revolution. It was well. Deus Ex. Either way, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided are actually reviewed lower than Xenoblade. So I don't. I don't think that. I, I think Xenoblade Chronicles has a lot better shot at it than Deus Ex does. Especially since Xenoblade Chronicles X is just such a, like it's like the only RPG not for Wii U. Um. So, the the odd one to me is that Blood and Wine. Because it's it's DLC. It's an expansion. It's it's DLC. But here's the thing. 
Of everything on this list, that Blood and Wine DLC is rated higher than everything else. It's like it's not even close. It's like at a 92, 93 well, on Metacritic, keep it in mind 94 too, on game rankings. Witcher 3 won. Dark Souls 3. What? Witcher 3 won best game of the, or one game of the year last year. So it did. I'm not surprised. It did. So like, so like the panel already loves Witcher 3. And the Blood and Wine, it might be like Wild Hunt. Like, I don't Blood and Wine itself is what a lot of people said is like the pinnacle of DLC. Mm-hmm. Like this is what DLC if you're going to charge for it, this is what it needs to be. Yeah. Like you can't, you know, charge for a, a couple maps and call it good like so many people do. Like this is what DLC, you know, whatever. Like if Zelda's going to have DLC, it needs to be like blood and wine and quality and, 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 and content and stuff. Like a fully new game um, basically. Yeah, it, yeah, but like it doesn't feel like it takes away. Mhm from the original game like that that's what so many people worry about oh if you're gonna have such a big story one or such a big you know dlc pack like that means that the first that the original game's incomplete but it's not that's, it's brilliant how cd project went I, so i think that's why it's included because it is like already the witcher 3 is already really good and this dlc pack did something that no one thought it could do mm-hmm. um but i again it does feel like it's dark souls 3 category to lose mm-hmm. um because you know it is a full game not not a, not dlc uh, it is the highest rated of the full games. It's higher rated than Deus Ex. It's higher rated than Xenoblade. Like in terms of ratings for full games, Xenoblade is two, um, but Dark Souls three is kind of a darling. It, it, it's you know it hasn't been nominated for anything else. Um, nothing else in this list has really been nominated for anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dark Souls three feels like the more popular of all of them. I, I think this is. I want to say that Dark Souls 3 is going to win, but but I know it feels weird, but I think Blood and Wine has a shot. No, I, I agree. I think it has a shot. I just feel like Dark Souls 3 is... Like, I, 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 like the only way I can think of it is if people look at it like, oh, how can we vote for DLC? But if they ignore that and they just go with what they feel is the absolute best on this list, Blood and Wine would probably win. I feel like that's going to be its downfall, though, the fact that it's DLC. Yeah, but, I, I think that's going to hold back the votes. But it was That's what I'm saying. Like, it was good enough to be nominated. Yeah. So it's like... Like they clearly think very highly of it. The reviews of it are uh, um, it's among the highest reviewed things this year, released over on any platform. It's crazy how high reviewed this is. Um, so you know what I'm I'm confused. I about. think it's between Dark Souls three and Blood and Wine. Ah, I want to say Legion has like ah, like they, they voted Legion in, so clearly it has. A, they all these games have a shot. You no, know, this isn't like the uh, you know because Legion Legion is just as high rated as Dark Souls three is. Mm-hmm. Um. So, like, this feels like a category, I think, that I can't definitively say it's going to go one way. Like, I feel like Dark Souls 3 obvi- is, like, the obvious choice. Yeah. But Blood and Wine and Legion and even Xenoblade Chronicles X are, like, such media darlings. You know what I'm surprised isn't on that list? Hmm. Bravely Second End here. I'm not surprised. Because it, it got pretty much the same reviews, like, in terms of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, but it doesn't have as many. As many what? reviews like there wasn't as many outlets who, who played it yeah but still like that that is like there's set there's what <laughs> 70 for that and zero by chronicles x had 87 yeah but still. so and zero by chronicles is actually three points higher and has a higher user score so um, so yeah if there was yeah i mean i can see what you're saying because i think i think that's a good game i don't think it's a chance no I, I know i just i'm surprised but, that it's yeah. not on that list either alongside so, Xenoblade or like i said this is the category i'm not sure about because i think the panel is going to think Blood and Wine is the best, but whether or not they vote that way because it's DLC, I don't know. I, if they don't vote that way, then they're going to go. I think with Dark Souls three, but again, if they don't consider Legion they, to be DLC, if they consider Legion to be a standalone thing, it is the highest rated World of Warcraft DLC like since <clears throat> Burning Crusade. So it it very well could end up going. I mean, now I keep flipping. I keep making arguments for everything else. <laughs> Just, just like it's, it's really like this is a very good category to me. Like, it, it's a strange, this is the strangest category we've seen because we, I've never seen DLC nominated for like a full role playing game award. Like, it's crazy. But like, it was so good, I could see how it wins. Okay, so I don't know. We don't. Dark Souls three. I uh, Dark Souls three. I think is going to be the winner. But I'm, I, I'm not. I'm like maybe sixty percent sure on that. I, I want Xenoblade Chronicles to win, but I know it doesn't really stand a chance. Oh yeah. Well, that's my Nintendo fandom. I don't think it. Like, I think Xenoblade Chronicles is, is fantastic. I don't think... I honestly don't think the production value on it is as good as... <laughs> we'll put it this way. It's against. the best open-world JRPG on a Nintendo console. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's funny too because it's not really even a JRPG the way they designed it. But anyways, <clears throat> best fighting anyways. game for a game designed primarily around head-to-head combat. I don't know how to. Pokemon tournament. I don't know how to answer this one because I haven't played. I haven't played a lot. I've only played Pokemon tournament. Um, but we've yeah. got Killer Instinct three by Iron Galaxy Studios and Microsoft. King of Fighters. Yep. Uh, sixteen. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. By SNK. Oh, that's that's isn't that fourteen? Probably. I don't know. Fourteen. That's, that's fourteen. By, yeah, Roman numeral. By SNK and Atlas USA. Yep. Uh, Poker King of Fighters is actually pretty good. By Bandai Namco Studios, the Pokemon company, and Street Fighter Five by Capcom. So this is either going to go to. Uh, I feel like this is either going to go to Pokemon tournament because it's the first like Pokemon fighting game people have been wanting this kind of thing forever, and it's decent. <clears throat> um. I feel like like by default it's Street Fighter Five. Even though there's been a lot of, you know, controversy surrounding it, overall I, I think the media ended up liking. Let me, let me actually look that up. Well, it got. I think the media likes Street Fighter Five because I got to remember, like it's media that's basically voting on this. So, Street Fighter. Oh, I can't even spell Street Fighter. Jeez. Like I got you know so so reviews. Uh, what what pocket tournament? Because if pocket <clears throat> tournament blew it out of the water with reviews, then I think pocket tournament is going to get it. No, pocket tournament was, was did not blow it out of the water. Uh, the no, same. see, I I think King of Fighters was really good, but well, did the media think it was good? <clears throat> I actually liked. Uh, so that is better reviewed right now. You know how about and, and again this is another weird weird thing because Killer Instinct was like on the Xbox One at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And this is just like another season of DLC. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, just like the last category, you know, is the panel really going to go for the DLC for a game that's already been out? Um, I, you know, I, I. This is a tough one. This this is really tough for me. I, I don't. Know. I play King of Fighters. I play Pac and Tournament, and Street Fighter Five has the name. Yeah. It has the name. It has the brand. It, it it is a game that's played at gaming like fighting competitions um i mean my vote is is just going to be for pokemon like that's, yeah. that's well that's the only one you played too yeah and you're a nintendo fan no, of, so, course. of course and it looks great it's beautiful um yeah and my only issue with it i guess is it seemed to lack characters and content yeah well it was it's but what what it had was really really yeah. good well it didn't have like you know street fighter and i think king of fighters has a story mode yeah, I, I think I think Pokemon Tournament suffered almost from what the original Killer Instinct when it came out. Did. All the Killer Instinct did it way different. You know, you had a couple characters and you had to buy more. Yeah. Um, but like Pokemon Tournament felt like it just came out with too few and too few places to fight. Yeah. It um, it was very. But it's really good. It's what what it has and what is it's good. Getting. I think if like it would have doubled the content it had, like I think it would have won this hands down. It, if it would have had like a, an all star ensemble, like a lots and lots sure. of Pokemon in it, instead of like especially 10. like Pokemon like really recognizable ones. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, it has good ones in it. So I, I think this is one that it, where I think it's going to end up being between Pokemon Tournament and Street Fighter Five. Um, they both reviewed very similarly. Street Fighter Five was played by more people, but it is what it is. Uh, Pokemon is obviously very recognizable as a brand, so you don't have to worry about brand recognition there. Uh, you're going Pokemon. I think it's going to end up going to Street Fighter Five by default because none of these games reviewed well. Yeah, and Street Fighter Five has the name and is the one, is the one game that's still played to this day. Like it's relevant mm-hmm. and like hardcore uh, gamers and stuff. Um, granted, at the tournaments they own all the DLC and everything, but yeah. it is what it is. All right, um, there you go. Best family fighters. Game. Move on. Family Best game. family game. Best game appropriate for family play, including Toys to Life, Rhythm, Music, Dance, and other genres. We have Dragon... It's basically just anything that you could see anyone in your family yeah. playing. Dragon, makes sense. Dragon Quest Builders by Square Enix. Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens by Traveler Tales. That's... Sorry. TT Fusion. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pokemon yeah. Go by Niantic. Ratchet and Clank by Insomniac. And Skylanders Imaginators by Toy for Bob slash Activision. So I think it's going to go... This is like the category I think Pokemon Go yeah, wins. That's what I was going to say. Because everyone played it. Um, whether you were an adult or a child, even the media members would be like, yeah, we didn't necessarily like think it was the greatest, but we, we still played the that's, damn, that's, damn thing. That was kind of my thing for uh, wh- whatever it was that it was up for earlier. Like Ratchet and Clank, to me, just isn't a family game. I know like Sony tries to make it out to be. It's an, It just doesn't well, feel like it's a family game. When your titles are like up your arsenal and stuff, it's not, not really yeah. a family game. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> they tried to um, Skylanders. It. Skylanders is definitely more of a family game, but I think that's not a game I necessarily view everyone playing. I feel more kids yeah. enjoying Skylanders more. Um, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, like... 
I, I mean, I could see how that's a family game, but isn't that just like every other Lego game out there? Yeah. Like, they're pretty much all the same. Dragon Quest Builders, again, it, it's like a Dragon Quest take on like Minecraft stuff. Well, and it's very... Dragon Quest is, is a like very niche thing for the West. Like, yeah, it's never, it is. It's, it's never been really I, good. I, I mean, I, I don't think this is... I mean, we both agree. It's Pokemon Go. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't matter. This was one where reviews don't necessarily matter. It's going to be games that they actually think people will play. Yeah. And Pokemon Go is going to win so, that one. Best strategy game. Best game focused on real-time or turn-based strategy gameplay. Oh, this is so tough for me. I know it is. I know exactly what I'm torn want to on make. three games. Civ 6 by Fire Axis Games and 2K. Fire Emblem Fates by Intelligent Systems. Banner Saga by Stoic Studio and Versus Evil. Total Warhammer. Total War Warhammer, which is I know that Nate is like... In love with, uh, by Creative Ensemble Assembly. In fact, in fact, while we're, I'm gonna start downloading the game right now because I want to play it. XCOM 2 by Fire Axis Games and 2K, which is really interesting to see Fire Axis up there with two games, but yep. they're not yep. small. Um, no. Hmm. My vote so, is gonna go to Fire Emblem. Like I, just, I figured you were going Fire Emblem. That's that's yep. where it's probably gonna go. Um, I don't think Fire Emblem's gonna take. This I don't one. think it is. I, I, but that's just my vote. Yeah, that's what you want. Like, if you were on the panel, you'd go Fire Emblem. I'd be like, yeah, Fire Emblem. Love that game. I'm torn because, one, Civilization VI is absolutely fantastic. Yes, it is. I, I don't own it yet because it's on my Christmas list. Um, so I've only watched gameplay videos of it. But I love Civ V <laughs> and Civ VI. Everyone who, like, loves Civ V has said Civ VI is, like, just even that much better. Mm-hmm. Um, so Civ VI is amazing. And we don't get new Civilization games that often, no. to be honest. I mean, the series has been around forever, and this is only number six. Like... <laughs> Well, okay, like there's there's like the <laughs> space one. Well, yeah, but those are like expansion packs. Yeah, um, it's kind of like what World of Warcraft does, except World of Warcraft doesn't have a War- World of Warcraft two. <laughs> um, Fire Emblem Fates is obviously we talked about it already. Great game, um, great pair of games. Uh, Banner Saga two is 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 really good, but I, I don't think it has a shot right here. Um, Total War Warhammer is amazing. Um, obviously, you know, as Alfred said, oh, Nate's going to gush about that one. Oh, of course I am. <laughs> uh, the Total War series is absolutely stunning. Um, it went into a rut, uh, I want to say, after Medieval 2. Uh, Shogun 2 really wasn't that great. Uh, the Empire, Total War Empire, wasn't really that good. Like, Total War kind of felt like maybe it ran its course. Maybe it, maybe Age of Empires out. Like, Age of Empires 3 came out, and that kind of killed the series. Um, and I felt like maybe Total War kind of reached that point where it killed itself. Um you know, it, it it just wasn't what its formula just wasn't going to work anymore, and then Warhammer happened, and it just changed everything. <clears throat> um, Total War felt like the perfect fit with that universe, and what they did and the unique ways they implemented all these new features. It really reinvigorated what Total War is, and the reviews show. Total War Warhammer, I think, might even be. Let me look up reviews. I think it might be the one of the highest. Shogun Two. Back in 2011. So what? Got, what do you? What do you 90. vote for? And what do you? Uh, Rome. Rome. Around? Rome was the best one. That's no surprise. Um, I, I think it's well. It's to, to me. It's between Warhammer, Fire Emblem Fates, and Civ, Civ Six. Six. Yeah. I don't think Fire Emblem is going to get it done. No. What do you? Who do you I, vote I, for? I want it. I, I see. I want Warhammer to win. Okay. So figured. But I think Civ Six is taking it. <clears throat> Best sports. Just Civ Six has all the media hype. So, it, best. I think it's best sports and racing game for traditional yes. and non-traditional sports and racing games. You got FIFA 17 by EA Canada and EA Sports. Forza Horizon. The best game isn't on the list. Forza Horizon 3. I know. I know what you're talking about. Uh, Playground Games by Microsoft Studios. MLB The Show 16 by uh, Sony. Computer yeah, it's a San Diego yeah, studio. San Diego. Yep. NBA 2K17. Visual Concepts. 2K Sports. Pro Evolution Soccer 2017. By PES Production of Konami. I think it's going to go to NBA 2K17. I'm not really a sports game guy, but I think that that's it's going to go to NBA. Um, let me see what that uh, Forza game got rated. Forza Horizon. Oh, okay. That changes things. <clears throat> Originally, I was going to say it's going to FIFA, MLB The Show, or NBA 2K17. Because FIFA is widely considered way better than Pro Evolution, so Pro Evolution shouldn't even be in the running. Mm-hmm. Um, FIFA is like the most popular sports game in the world, and every version they release is usually really, really good. Uh, MLB The Show is the de facto baseball game. Um, I didn't play 16. I did play 15, so it has no bearing on 16 at all and how good it is because I haven't played it to compare. I do have NBA 2K17 rented right now from Gamefly. 
fantastic. Um, they really improved on the story mode in it, which is why I think it might win. Because like as much as hype as the Spike Lee story got last year, it really wasn't that good. Um, and this year they kind of made the story mode make sense and matter uh, in a way that I didn't think they could. I always thought it was going to be a silly thing, and now it's like this is something you can invest in. Um, and the gameplay is just as good as it's always been. NBA 2K17, um, I was going to give the win to. Then I just happened to glance at I know. how well Forza Horizon 3 is reviewing. 91. I've never been a Forza guy. Like, FIFA 17 is not close. MLB The Show is not close. NBA 2K17 isn't close. Um, I think it's going to go end up going to Forza. Who do you want to win? Because it... Well, I, the game I want to win is not on the list. I know. You want <laughs> NHL. Or not NHL. <laughs> you want Madden to win. Yes. And I'm not just saying that because, like, you know... The, the, the criticisms people have of Madden are the same reasons that FIFA shouldn't be on the list, or MLB <laughs> The Show, or 2K17 shouldn't be on the list. You know, it's just slight improvements to a previous game. It's a roster update. Um, but, like, that's not just what Madden 17 is, and I'm not going to get into all the nitty-gritty details on that. Um, but but I think Forza is going to win because it's the most different of all the games on there, and it's not a yearly game. Mm-hmm. And it's also the most high-reviewed game of all the games on the list. So it doesn't come out as often. Uh like, all the rest of these games are yearly games, except for Forza. And Forza reviewed really well. Yep. So I think it's going to go to Forza. And I think if any other game is going to knock it off, it's going to be... Uh, let me glance at MLB The Show quick. Because MLB The Show is, is a big media darling in the U.S. Yep. No, so so I think it's going to go to Forza Horizon. If another game is going to take it, it's going to be NBA 2K. Okay. So, so you said NBA <clears throat> 2K, so yep. that's like my second choice. All right. It's kind of the, what I what I would want to win out of what's available there, but <sighs> all right. So best multiplayer oh game for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay oh, design, okay. including it's co-op and massively multiplayer experiences. Got Battlefield One, Gears of Four, Gears of War. This four. Oh, this this upsets me. Overcooked, Overwatched. That's confusing. Overcooked is so fun. Rainbow Six Siege and Titanfall Two. Yes. So. Out of what's on this list, I think Titanfall 2 should win, but it's not going to. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, I want it to win because it, it, it just is that good, but it, it's it's not going to. It's going to be Overwatch or Battlefield yeah, 1. Yeah, I think it's going to go to either Overwatch or Battlefield 1. I, I would love to see a game like Overcooked get that recognition because it, it's a very good game. Just It's so much fun to play with friends. Uh, but I think, I think Overwatch is probably going to end up taking it. Battlefield 1 has a shot. Uh... I'm very surprised that they didn't include Legion in this list. Oh, for of World of Warcraft. Because it's a massively multiplayer experience. Yeah. Like, it's an MMO. It's literally multiplayer. Um, so I'm very surprised that they included, like, Overcooked or, like, Rainbow Six Siege, which clearly it has no shot to me, um, and didn't include, like, the, the most popular multiplayer game in the world right now. Yeah. It's really weird. But, uh... Yeah, I, I think Overwatch is probably going to take this category. Yeah, I think Overwatch is going to take it. I'd like to see Overcooked win. Um, yeah, but if, that's the thing. Like, I, I want to see them go for Overcooked because I think it is deserving. It's just, I don't know how it's going to beat on Overwatch. I think if Overwatch didn't win any other category, it would win this one. Now, um, here's the nominees. We get to actually cast a vote for. Okay, I don't know that much about esports, do you? Uh, not the individuals. I know the team names. I'll set a hungry box. Um... Yeah, Hungry Box. I know because of, he was at the Nintendo event. I don't know that much about back him. Back in the day, and so. we're at two hours and uh, yeah. Hung, minutes. Hungry Hungry Box is the one of the best Super Smash Bros. players yeah. in the world. Um, so I'm gonna go down. We're gonna go down to most anticipated game. Just gonna. Oh, we're not gonna trending gamer. I mean, we can. Um, because I only I only say that because last year Greg Miller won and gave probably the best speech I've no, ever he heard did. in my life. So that oh, speech is amazing. If you guys haven't seen the Greg Miller speech, you need to go watch it from last year. And then listen to his totally reasoning, amazing. reasoning behind it. Oh, um, it's so good. So here's Trending Gamer. For a streamer, influencer, media member who has made an important impact on the industry in 2016, we've got Angry Joe yep. Show, uh, yep. Boogie2988, yep. Danny O'Dwyer. Also known as Francis. Yep. Danny O'Dwyer, Jacksepticeye, and Lyric. So this is this is the thing. Is Jacksepticeye is a huge audience. Yes, he does. And he's good. Yeah. So I can see him winning. 
Um, well, they all have kind of huge audiences. Yeah, I know. But, like, he's he's probably the one I know the most. Like, I've been subscribed to him forever. Like, he's got, what, he's got 13 mil? Something like that. Some of these other guys. What, what, what's Angry Joe at? He's at, uh... He's at, at two mil, so yeah, he might be like the, the most followed of all. Well, of and them. here's the thing too: is it's not necessarily about. And this is one of the things that we we found out last year. Yeah, like this isn't necessarily a popular. Well, this is. Well, we found out last contest. year with Greg Miller, is that this isn't really about how many views you have. It's can you inspire your audience to vote for you? Yes. And so yes, if, and, and I think this is where someone like Daniel Dwyer has a shot. Yeah. Is if he's like because hey guys vote for me I'm nominated for this and then. Like, he doesn't have a huge audience, like, following him on, on YouTube. You know, I mean, he does okay for himself. He's got 22,000. Like, that's what Zelda Informer basically has. So, like, and, and our YouTube channel is dinky. Mm-hmm. So, like, but that's not what he's known for. Yeah. He's known for his work at, at, at the number two video game site in the whole world. Um, and doing a fantastic job there. And he was still working there earlier this year. Um, I bet he. I don't know if he's. If he, I don't know. He might still be working there. Who, I'm Danny? Sure. I thought Danny left yeah. to do his own thing. Yeah, I thought he did. That's why. That's why you know the trailer mm-hmm. goes to his YouTube channel. But he's still. He left this year. Yeah. Um, and like, kind of funny games, kind of left around like a similar time, mm-hmm. like last year or maybe it was two years ago now. Um, but anyways, the Game Awards didn't have this category that year. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. I, otherwise, I think Greg Miller would have maybe won the year before. So like. He, he, you know, Greg Miller deservedly won last year despite not being the most popular choice on there in yeah. terms of followers. Uh, Danny O'Dwyer, I think, has inspired a lot of people uh, through his work at, at, at GameSpot. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the fact that he went independent and basically did it all on his own. Um, it wasn't like when Greg Miller left and brought like three, four people with him. Yeah. You know, Greg Miller mm-hmm. got the recognition, but really he only got that award uh, because of what they were able to do collectively as a group. And he says that. He's not taking this for himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he said that in his... I mean, you can even listen to it. To his, to his, he yeah. knows that that award is not just about him. Like, that's what that group was able to do and what they, that group means to so many people. And Greg Miller is just that, you know, that, that go-to personality of that group. Um, so he was the one that got recognized. And Daniel Dwyer is completely on his own. And I personally am a huge <laughs> fan of him. Um, so, like, I was a huge fan of Greg Miller, and he was the only one... Um, I'm a huge fan of Daniel Dwyer, yeah. and he's. I really want him to win. I really think he's got a legit shot, just because of pe- people are going to know who he is. On you know, like fans are going to know mm-hmm. who this guy is, even if he doesn't have a big following. Um, and, and I also look at it as you know, you're looking at you know who's the most influential media member. Like I don't know that Angry Joe is any more influential <laughs> this year than he was last yeah. year. Like I, I, I like his stuff, but like I, you know, yes, yeah, following's grown, but is he really any more influential than he's ever been? Uh, Boogie, you know, is he really any more influential now than he used to be? I think if the Game Awards existed years ago, you could say that he is. Because when he came out to talk about his eating disorder um, and all of his personal strifes he's had to go through to get to where he is, like, that's a very inspiring story. Mm-hmm. And you could you could argue that that makes him, like, a big influencer for people to follow their dreams. And that that's very true. But, again, that wasn't this year. That wasn't even last year. Like, he, he, he did this a, a little while ago, and he'll bring it up now and then because, you know, not everyone watches all his videos, so not everyone knows. But reality is that, like, that wasn't an impact he made necessarily this year. Um, Daniel Dwyer, like, he went independent this year. Yeah. Um, Jack Septimus, obviously the most popular of all of them. And here's the thing. Uh, like, L- 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 do you know anything about Lyric? No. But like I said earlier... That's the thing. I don't know anything about him because he's got such a small following. Like, who is he? Well, but this is the thing. Like I said earlier, it's, it's not necessarily about the following. Um, I know, but that's what I'm saying. That like I haven't heard of this guy. Like, where did he, where did he come? Well, from? I know, um, but like, uh, we'll put it this way: there are prob- there were people that hadn't heard of um, kind of funny. They hadn't heard of Greg Miller, which is surprising because he was like the face of IGN for a while. Um, yeah, they, they hadn't heard of. Well, it, if you were a fan of PlayStation, you heard of him. Yeah, if you were a fan of PlayStation, but a lot of people hadn't, um, and it's because they motivated their followers. Like they were on Twitter every day. Oh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, oh, they're they're the you know this is the one I'm shocked isn't on there. Who? Um, and, and maybe it's because they couldn't think of an individual for this award because it's trending gamer. Yeah, but like, no one from Easy Allies is on here. Yeah, like they literally got shit canned without a choice. Like, like kind of funny was a choice, mm-hmm. an inspiring choice to to leave like a really cushy corporate job, but. It's still a choice. Yeah. Easy Allies, did they 
they have no guarantee of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it, you know the only one you would really pick from that is maybe Brandon Jones because he runs everything. <clears throat> but like a lot of people, you know, like follow because of Kyle Bossman. Um. So well, like I don't again, know. maybe that's something that they'll that, that one of them will be on the show next year because like now Kyle Bossman probably before this panel was picked, um, they didn't know that Kyle Bossman was going to be on the uh, that YouTube streaming show every Thursday. Mm-hmm. He does a bit on there now and he's like a regular with Jeff Keeley. Um. So, you know, I could see maybe Kyle Boston becoming one next year. But it, it kind of surprises me that – because this is the year, like, everything went to crap for them. Yeah. And they kind of came out of that <laughs> with, like, being able to still do this kind of thing for a living, making the content they want to make. Um, well, I, I don't know. I'm also a big Easy Alley fan, so I guess I'm a little – like, I'm a big Daniel Dwyer fan, so, like, I'm kind of biased to say I want Daniel Dwyer to win. Plus, I think he would give, like, a killer speech. Well, I, I, um, I think I think it'll be, like, Greg Miller level of appreciation. We'll, we'll end it with this. Um, if you want your person to win, vote for them. Because this is the fan choice. Yeah, this is a fan vote. Um, like, you guys can go to the, the gameawards.com slash nominees. And and just like, okay, for the, the streamies that YouTube does every year, there are a lot of yeah. big names that go up against, um, like, a lot of these. But like, we talk about Jack, Jack Septic guy is a really big name. Uh, probably one yes. of the bigger names on that He's list. probably the biggest name yeah. on that list. But, like, um, for the streamies... Uh, the, there was like Game Theorists, Rooster Teeth, the Young Turks. Say what you will about yeah, that. Yeah, just huge channel. And De- the Philip DeFranco show won, and I absolutely love that show. Love that guy. Um, and, yep. and, and they won, and because they inspired their fans to vote. So if you if you yep. really want a game uh, gamer to win, go vote for him. And finally, yep. most anticipated game. Oh, recognizing. Oh, we're going to skip over the controversial best fan creation. Yeah, yeah. You mean the two of them? Um, I, I think no matter who wins, there's just going to be booze in the audience. Yeah. Um, if you've <laughs> okay. managed to stay with us for the whole two hours and forty-seven minutes, it's okay. We're making like a habit of these of these Nate I know, and right? <laughs> Nate and Alfred being two hours. So, All right, I'm just not going to cut this one up. It's just going to go straight through. Um, oh God! So our most this is most anticipated game. <sighs> recognizing an upcoming game that has shown significant ambition. Is it even promise. fair for us to talk about this? <laughs> See, we can talk about what we want to win, but we can talk about what we know is going to win. And promise. Well, and, what I, what if it's the same thing? Hold on. Oh, they're voting by Twitter. And, and promise in moving the medium, the gaming medium forward, must be announced and scheduled for release after. Well, Nintendo Prime just casted its vote. <laughs> so it says God of War by Santa Monica Studio, yep. Sony yep. Interactive yep. Entertainment. Huge game. Sure. Lots huge of cheers game. for it. And then absolutely huge. Horizon Zero um, Dawn by Guerrilla yep. Games, Sony Interactive Entertainment. This is the game that PlayStation Four owners have been waiting for. Something like this, like a defining new IP. Looks fantastic. Um, there are some reservations some have yeah. about it. Now that they figured out how, like, some of the one of the core gameplay mechanics that is a mechanic people actually yeah. don't like. But um, anyways, Mass- we don't know yet. The game's not here yet. Mass uh, Effect Andromeda by Bioware and EA. Um, that's you know name recognition. Yeah. it's got Mass Effect behind. Put it, it. this way: twenty seventeen has oh, yeah. so many big games. Here's here's the thing that's going to cause Legend of Zelda some trouble: Red Dead Redemption Two by Rockstar Games. Yeah, and then of course we've got Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. We are you guys. Yeah. Everybody knows. Nate and I are voting for Breath of the Wild. Okay, this easily not not. Well, we'll say it's big. Like I'm really looking forward to Mass Effect. I'm a big Mass Effect fan. Um, I haven't played a lot of the God of War games, although they look really great. And this, you know, literally just called God of War game coming out looks like it might be the next step. Yeah, like it might be like the Breath of the Wild to God of War. Um, None of these games franchise. look bad. Let's let's say that too. None yeah, like these are bad. fantastic games. Um, Red Dead Redemption Two. We haven't seen anything I from them. I think, yeah, that's the thing. Like, we're anticipating it because of how good one was. Well, two. Um, and because it's by Rockstar Games, who I don't I don't think they've released a bad game. I could be wrong on that. Someone will find some obscure game they've let's, released let's, that wasn't that good. Red Dead Redemption is technically Red Dead 2. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. Because we had Red yeah. Dead Revolver before then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Sorry, semantics. <sighs> no, it's okay. So, like, I... I... I the only thing is, like, we're, this is just most anticipated. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, what you think looks the best No, right I know, now. I know. That's the thing is um, Breath of the Wild had, like, like, huge... like, Mass Effect. We've hardly seen anything from, but we're going to get five minutes of it at the Game Awards. Yeah. And we're going to get... The, like, finally see what this game we're gonna is. We're going to get five more minutes some, like... of God of War, probably, and Horizon Zero Dawn, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, yeah, we're probably... All these games are probably going to be uh, there somewhere. And here's the thing, uh, is that out of all of these, like, a, a lot of people, like, two of them are Sony exclusives. You got God of War sure. and Horizon Zero Dawn. Those are only going to yep. come out for Sony, which that's not saying anything about them. Like these are still very good games, very highly anticipated games. Yep. But 
I, again, I think it's going to come down to Breath of the Wild or Red Dead Redemption 2. It's going to come down to those two because one, Breath of the Wild literally destroyed, it owned most of the year's hype yeah. after E3. Like, it, that was it. That was the most talked about thing. I think the only reason Red Dead Redemption 2, even as a shot, because I think if it was announced earlier this year, yeah. it, it wouldn't have been able to beat Breath of the Wild. Like, if it was announced before Breath of the Wild and then Breath of the Wild got announced at E3, I don't, I don't think it'd be even close. But Red Dead Redemption 2 is the most recent of these announced games. And it's, like, the trailer's really popular. It's actually about the past Breath of the Wild <clears throat> for views, despite the fact the trailer doesn't really show Well, anything. and here's the thing, too, is that we're anticipating Red Dead Redemption 2 being good. We already know. But, but here's what I also know. I've seen fan voting in the past, right? Like, GameFAQs does, every now and then does their, like, best game of all time thing. Yeah. And it's totally fan votes. Zelda fans show up to vote, man. Yeah. I'm not like crazy. I'm not discounting the games beat that. other like like I love Zelda games, but like they beat out games that are way more popular than them. So I think that if this was a panel game, like like if a panel was choosing, I think they'd choose Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, just because of how like as much as they might be excited for Red Dead Redemption Two, that trailer doesn't really say oh it's revolutionizing anything. Breath of the Wild looks like it's completely changing what we know Zelda to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they'd be excited about Horizon Zero God of War, but like they, again, we don't know enough to nec- outside of Horizon. That's a new IP. We don't know enough to know if those games are really doing anything or just doing more of the same. And Breath of the Wild, we already know, and they've already played hands on. Yeah, but this again, this is just anticipation. But this is fans. Well, this is yeah, like this is, but this is fan. This is a fan vote, which is totally different because it's like a popularity contest. Well, imagine like if we had never seen anything from Breath of the Wild, and we'd already seen all the stuff from Red Dead Redemption Two. We kind of know what we expect out of that, and so like hype is like I personally would still vote Breath of the no, Wild. No, I know, but, but like but the general, I don't think it would. I don't think it win generally because we've seen. A lot of, of footage from Breath of the Wild. Not sure. that it's kind of sizzled down, but it's like, okay, well, we know what to expect. Like, we know this game is coming out soon. We know that's going to be fantastic. But we, we're anticipating something with Red Dead Redemption 2. We're anticipating a great yeah. game. Um, we're, we're like, oh my gosh. This... Anticipating, like, a reveal. Yeah. Yada, yada. Like, all this stuff. Like, that's that's what, that the, like, most anticipated game, like, that's, sadly, that's why No Man's Sky won, is because of the promise and the hype <laughs> behind that game. Sure, and that's why I think Red Dead Redemption Two is going to win this one is because of the promise. Of- well, here's the thing: we, we both can agree it's a two horse race, right? Yeah, and that's not the discredit. Like Mass Effect, it's going to be amazing. Horizon or God of War, like we're not discrediting. It's just these games have been known for a while, and people are still talking about Red Dead Redemption Two and Zelda more yeah. than them. Like, it, it's just the way it is. And, and I know there's a little bias because we're the Zelda Informer yeah. podcast, like a three hour podcast, <laughs> and. Like, we are obviously biased towards Zelda. We are in a lot of Nintendo communities, so we hear a lot of Zelda. But even if you, like, go to NeoGAF, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Breath of the Wild are constant topics popping up in the most recent talked about stuff all the time. Um, <clears throat> these other games are not popping up. Like, I haven't seen a God of War thread pop up there and, well, since the game was announced, basically. Um, well, they don't, they don't have that. that doesn't mean people aren't anticipating it. Like, this is Red Dead Redemption 2 or Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And I think because Red Dead Redemption 2 is the more recent, and it's been seven and a half years, um, or at least it will well, be officially been, since the very first game came up. For so yeah. long. Like, people have been like, yeah. well, when are we going to get Red Dead 2? Like, we've already had two. But Red see, that again, games. by the time Breath of the Wild comes out, it's at least five and a half years. So no, it's like it's, it's like a similar. I, I know we had a link between worlds, but well, like, people just comparing, like, console games. Like, I. I, it's a two horse race. I'm I'm more anticipating Zelda than Red Dead. Yeah. Um, I still think they're both gonna be fantastic. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with Zelda winning. Uh, you can stick with your Red Dead. I think Red- one of us is gonna be right. Yeah. Maybe we should put a bet on this one. No. Good. <laughs> put uh, a bet on this one because this is like this is the one I think is the closest of all the votes. We can. Like, if you really want to put a bet on this, uh, Nate, we can. I still need to do my other one, which is hopefully I know. Christmas. That's the thing. I'm like, can I can I make him bet and have him lose? And then not fulfill this. If bet. you don't make me dress up or like buy and put clothes together, then probably you didn't have to buy clothes for it. Yeah, you know, I said dress up as much as you can. Like, I have it nothing. Didn't mean go buy stuff. I have nothing to look. With. You have nothing green. I no. Nothing red. I, no construction paper. You can just wrap around your nether areas. Nether. That's what I'm saying. It's as best as you can. Like I was. I was well, and that you stuff. also maybe you also are making me learn a song that I don't. Oh know. oh oh jeez. You know how easy it is to learn a song. Sorry. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> Especially since you could just like look at a lyric video and do it. Like uh, yeah, you're making anyway. me sing. It's it's awful. I'm putting it off. 
Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> it needs to be completed before the end of the year. Come All on. All right, we'll see. Okay, no bet because now I'm upset. <laughs> Alfred still hasn't fulfilled his last bet. <sighs> and by the way, I'm like 2-0 and in bets this year because on the Nintendo Prime podcast we did some, some sort of bet, and I won that one against Darren and uh, you know, the manager editor is all the former, and then my best bud, Eric Moore, and they both owe me a 10-second poem to my greatness. See, okay, you oh. made them do something like that. I have to dress up as Tingle and sing a Backstreet Boys song or NSYNC. Well, I couldn't do anything, like, mean to, to my, like, I was trying to keep it light. <laughs> like, because I remember the bet was something just really stupid. It wasn't like us. Like, we had, like, a, like a hardcore prediction bet thing. Like, this was, like, something stupid. Yeah. This, this was, like, a fan bet. Like, fans voted on who won. <laughs> so I was like, I was trying to make it. I was trying to make it easy. I I, I want it to be so easy next time. It's going to be something like, like, oh, oh. I'm gonna. I, I might bring hot pepper into Ugh, that one. You're a monster. But it's not. It's not going to be a. Well, no, not not for here. No, I know. I'm ones. aware. This is your show now. I don't make. The, I don't make the. the <laughs> no, I know. Here. I meant like you're you're going to do that for them. You're still a monster for doing that. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> here's the thing. Like, I can't because Darren can't record anything. <sighs> Wait, I know what. Okay, that, that guy. Anyways, anyways, Darren, you're safe for now. You still owe me that poem, though. <laughs> All right, so you're going Red Dead. I'm going Breath of the Wild. I think that is the end of the award. That is. That's all. We're at two. And that should be the end of this podcast. Two hours, 56 minutes. I mean, that might be a little less. May, there might be like a 20 minutes cut. Maybe. Well, cause, well, no, I might keep the whole B-movie script in there. Just, oh, my just God, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> just to mess with them. If you make it this okay. far. Thanks for joining us yeah. on the Zelda Informer podcast. I can't believe it's 1130. I know. Well. Thank you guys, and see ya, <laughs> see ya next week. Hopefully we'll have uh, special guests on to talk about Times End 2 and the fan film. Um, but until then, see ya. And go Pack Go. They got the win. Yes. Bye. Bye.